Welcome food fans, picky eaters, the flavor curious, and everyone in between. Nothing makes good food better than good conversation. And your table is ready. Come right this way to the Food for Thoughtcast with your host, Melissa Reagan. But you can call her chef. All right, let's get this episode started. As a chef and a person who loves all kinds of food, I'm always looking for ways that I can emphasize quality over quantity without feeling like I'm missing out or depriving myself of the things that I love. And I love pasta, carbonara, mac and cheese, primavera, cacio pepe, you name it and I'm all about it. That's why I choose Bonza. Bonza is the pasta made from chickpeas, which means it has more protein, more fiber, and I believe more flavor than regular old pasta. Seriously, if you go in my pantry right now, there are two boxes in there awaiting their next culinary adventure. Bonza has over 12 different kinds of pasta, including penne, rotini, elbows, and cavatappi, which is my favorite, because all of those curves and ridges hold even more delicious sauce. Bonza also makes pizza crust, which tastes too good to believe that it comes from peas. You can find Bonds at Whole Foods, Target, and Walmart. Hey there, food fans. Welcome back to the Food for Thoughtcast with me, your host, Melissa Reagan. As always, you can call me Chef. And with us tonight, thank Jesus, we've got my co-host, Stephen <laughs> Gonzalez, uh, the co-host for the most. What's up, Steve? Hola, hola. What's up? Hola, hola. But tonight yeah. we have two very special guests. This is Mikey and Dave from the Deuce Cast movie show. What's up, guys? We're excited what to hear about special time? guests. Oh. <laughs> yeah me he's too like, i'm excited he's like where are they Dr. Um, Earl's here. <laughs> <laughs> so we have two thirds of the deuce cast movie show on tonight um this podcast is the reason that i have a podcast not gonna wow. lie these mm -hmm. guys are amazing if you love movies please sh check out their show i'll give them a chance at the end to like plug it and tell you all the good things about it but so happy to have you both here um yes. thank you for, thank you for asking us. Excited to be here, guys. Man, thank you for yeah, being here. Awesome. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I have to ask, as I do every guest, what was the most amazing thing you ate this week? Anybody go first. Oh, I'm going <laughs> to yes. go first. I had a hockey game hot dog mm. that was the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey had a warm water hot dog from a cart. Oh, I love <laughs> it. I love that. It. Sounds it fantastic, so, actually. It was amazing. <laughs> he might need an antibiotic in a couple days. Man, look, I've destroyed this body so much over the years that I can handle any type of food that enters it. So. At this point, it's actually, it's probably, he's going to live forever. I mean, he's going to beat all of us. Yeah, it's exactly. Just, Got yeah. it. All the preservatives in me from Got all it. the fake food I eat. <laughs> I say, like, the more preserved as you eat, the more well preserved you are. We'll see if that holds up in about. I hope that's years. right. <laughs> yeah, the chemicals, they're there for a reason, you know? It yeah, helps. Exactly. It helps. Seriously. If it makes a McDonald's uh, burger look good forever, then it's going to make me look good forever. That's, that's my theory. That's so... good logic right there. <laughs> Dave, what was the most amazing thing you ate this week? You know, I was th well. This week, I'm going to pretend like this week is over the last say 12 days, because of course I went to Disney World last week. Got back last week uh, for my anniversary, and we yes. I ate several great meals. Not intending on eating several great meals, but we kept we kept ending up in table service restaurants, and uh, yes. we ate at one of the most amazing sushi places I've ever been a part of, uh, Shikisai in Epcot, and it was 
absolutely delicious. I, I had a little bit of sushi. Most of my stuff was off the grill, and the way they served it was fantastic. There's stuff they would put into a bowl, and it would actually cook while it was in the bowl in front of you as you're eating it. It's continuing to cook on the bottom because the bowl is so oh, hot. Nice. Um, I had some sort of steak dish. I can't, I'm looking at the menu. I don't. Even, I can't even tell you what it was. Um, <laughs> but it was a sort of a steak dish. You also could order like skewers of shrimp, pork, uh, chicken, or steak, and they would just bring you basically meat on a stick. Um, mm. Had some scallop uh, um, sushi, which was you know a little bit of rice and a big slimy piece of scallop on top and it was fantastic they brought us like a, for our anniversary they bought us some some matcha ice cream which was also yes. delicious and the, the serving was great because then when the when the server came up she handed us all wet wipes and she stood there while we wiped our hands with the wet wipes she was like for you, i'm not gonna do that <laughs> but you know for you to wipe your hands and so she is like, like she's waiting on us like a mom going wipe your hands come on let's go let's go and then she had a little towel to pick everything up and it was delicious <laughs> it was absolutely delicious and i would rec highly recommend this restaurant to anybody going and wants a sit good sit down meal even if you don't like sushi my wife doesn't like sushi and she loved this restaurant so nice. yeah good stuff oh man not oh, as good so as a hockey hot dog but it was still good <laughs> <laughs> so steve i was listening to the episode where dave like they gave some um dining reviews uh for mm -hmm. their recent trip to disney uh -huh. world and he was saying that this hot bowl they serve they kind of have it's like a sushi slash hibachi concept and okay. he was saying that the bowl was like a mokahete but it was heated so all the rice nice. inside was like crispy and i just yeah by the time you get to the bottom yeah. bowl it's like crispy and still sizzling oh. or whatever and it I sounds like that. So well yeah. my, my, well not, not not only that the restaurant was a little cool so my wife of course putting her hands on the bowl to, you know kind of warming them up yes. a little bit and everything and she's just yes. as she's eating it she's like this is amazing. And of course the fireworks are going off outside the window. So I'm like, this is, we had great friends here. The, the drinks are great. I'm like, this is, this is perfect. Yeah. This is whole thing is fantastic. That's um, fantastic. Oh yeah. Good nice. stuff. Steve, the most amazing thing. What is it? Uh, I have been making some more content. So it was, it's a tie between like those uh, cheese stuffed biscuits or uh, my mm. Alfredo cheesy Mac and cheese bites with uh rotini yes. pasta instead of Mac and cheese. Oh, yes. Uh, so yeah, like out of my cookbook, uh, that biscuit recipe, you kind of make it like the the Red Lobster, like Cheddar Bay biscuit recipe, and you stuff it with a ton of mm -hmm. cheese and then air fry it and throw in butter and then air fry it some more. I'm not going to lie. I mean, my breathing is getting just a little heavier thinking about it right now. But, <laughs> you know, that's not a bad thing. My arteries are hardening actually thinking about that right now. It sounds <laughs> delicious. <laughs> and uh, So yeah, we also did some mac and cheese bites and, you know, you just make it like a nice thick cheesy sauce with alfredo mm. and and mm. pasta and then uh you of course you air i i chose to air fry because i'm a deep fryer so that still came out good with the vodka sauce oh yeah mm. i gotta say those were the two good things i've had this week yeah what about well, you so i lived vicariously through everybody i love like seeing i i listened to uh dave's episode about all the dining reviews was because i have a, tr a disney trip coming up um, next year, hopefully early next year. So I'm, I'm furiously taking notes and then, um, let's face it. I'll, I'll kind of also eat everything and anything. <laughs> so, uh, I went to my local tonight. I went to good friends on the way home from work and, uh, I had some Korean wings, some, mm. like a half order of chicken nachos. And, uh, I had their hummus, which is amazing. Oh. Like, Zero yeah. complaints. And there was a couple of regulars in there tonight who didn't know that I was relocating for work. So they were like, let's buy you a celebratory shot. So <laughs> nice. dude, I, I, I can't complain like, like a super fun Friday night uh, for work. So <laughs> like, yeah. That's why I'm drinking some scotch tonight. Just <laughs> okay. for you. Celebrating Steve, just for you. What, yes. Steve, what is it? Because I had Jameson and a pickleback, but like, what is uh, that? Some Johnny Walker <laughs> gold. So okay. yeah, special. Dasani, nice. just for you, right here. Right. Yes, let's yeah, I've do also it. Got some water too, but yeah. one for me, one for my homie. So. I have a, I have a Sam's Club Diet Cola, like standing by. Nice, just, it's on standby, mm -hmm. just in nice. case. So. Yeah. Well, I'm really. It's all your stuff sounded great, but I'm really <laughs> sorry that it wasn't a hockey game. A uh, hockey game because that, I mean, that obviously was better than everything you guys said. So, so this is actually our very last podcast because we have nothing that can top a hockey game hot dog. That's right. This is it. This is it. Yeah. Well, the question oh, is, and obviously, in, everyone. <laughs> what you do at home is obviously different than what you do at a stadium or an arena or whatever. Um, right. To the chefs, what is the appropriate topping or condiment for a hot dog? And do you frown upon certain condiments as many people do? Because oh, I'm not a hot dog, period. I like what I <laughs> this like. This is a dangerous is. road, David. So, this is a I'm dangerous just, I'm curious. This is, these We're are the going experts down in the rabbit hole. You know, he came prepared. He came prepared. I like it. Steve? 
so I do a lot of different things. Some of my favorite uh, toppings for hot dogs are either like some sauteed onions or like some fried capers and mayo, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, you can never go wrong with like chili or even ketchup. I'm not going to say that it's a bad thing, you know? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> I don't know what they serve on hockey hot dogs, hockey game hot dogs, you know? I, I'm just simple. I off, need to go. off brand mustard is what you put on a hockey hot dog. <laughs> Dude, it's like great value mustard or yes. you know, or you'll yeah. say something like King's Royal mustard and yeah, you gotta, it's something like you're, random. you're peeling the corner off with your teeth and it's a little sticky because the mustard broke in the box. It definitely and so, wasn't yeah. French's. You're, you're, you're like you're like walking from the wherever you went to the concession stand back to your right. seat, but mm-hmm. you only have two hands available. So yeah. you've, oh, you've yeah. like picked the corner of the mustard packet and you're squeezing your mouth like in between like hot dog bites like yeah like you're pulling right. a drive through but you're like See, that's that's why we as a nation and the world will never conquer covid because we would wear all the masks and we would sanitize and do the six foot the vaccinations but we're still ketchup with a cheese you know that thing has been through like china and the ocean and boxes and man handling whatever right. and look, yeah, we're grabbing that packet sticking right in our mouth look I, look i'm Sorry. not gonna lie like i super mastering covid did it or didn't matter is really not mm-hmm. important. Like I ended up getting it twice anyway, but I was super conscious for the most part part, but there was a stain that I couldn't identify at work today on a counter. And I, I literally went yep. like that and was like, no. and I was like, okay, well, I think this is like organic. So I'm just going like, to use like a Clorox peppermint thing. or garlic. I can't really tell. Yeah. I have this hint, right. hints of vanilla. Like I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's like we're I because I I, I think you're like I think my generation has lived through everything, so I'm yeah. like, well, I must have an iron gut and everything. Else. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm like, dude, come on! In my 20s, it was like great Mad Dog and uh, Dave. Didn't you post a reel about this? Earlier I did. This week? Was like, <laughs> I did some so like because the new trend is like the, the 90 the the Gen Z are going back and they're trying mm-hmm. like liquors from the 90s. Oh. And some guy was like, you haven't earned the right to try Mad Dog 2020, dude. <laughs> I mean, just, dude. You don't understand it. You don't understand what you're doing. You have not earned that right to do it. Look, like <laughs> Mad Dog Grape was my jam, and then mm-hmm. I would chase that in my 20s with like Jaeger Red Bull. Like if I could live through that, I could live through. Thing. Your yeah. gut, has, <laughs> your gut has a nice patina about it. Yes, that's what like yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. It sounds like, like our guts like Mordor with the big heavy doors like, and stuff, and you, you know, shall not yeah. pass. That's like all the good bacteria in my gut. Yeah, it's unfortunately, like, that's what it says to my food. You shall not pass, and then um, dude, yeah, it hurts. And then, two, <laughs> and then two or three days later, it does, and then you it's know, like you shall pass. Oh yeah. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> this is not the way I thought this was gonna. Well, go. I mean. <laughs> It all relates to the hot dog. I'll be honest with you. That will be you tomorrow. All, <laughs> all right. So, so quick subject change. Yeah. So okay. this yeah. is yes. going to be, I mean, we're going to come back to it because sure. y'all ever seen that scrubs episode where like everything comes down to poo. Like we're going to come back, but um, <laughs> yes, yes. So, it's brilliant. So we're on episode mm, at the time of this release, it'll be like 56 or so. What episode mm. is the deuce cast on? Oh gosh. 620. <laughs> Six twenty. Six twenty. Yeah. yeah. Impressive. <laughs> it's it's so impressive. It's really is insane. I don't it's, know. Well, it's it's really funny though because okay, so and I and I've done the research and I've looked at this. Um, episode fifty two. You're you're in like the top eight percent of podcasts because people, <laughs> right. I mean, like I want to say eighty yeah. percent of podcasts stop before episode three. Yep. And yep. making it like twenty five or thirty puts you in like the top twenty percent of podcasts. Like, mm-hmm. and I, there's something there's. 3,309,000 podcasts out there like currently right now. Uh, I did some look, I looked at it today, um, some stats. And um, so 52 is nothing to sneeze at. I mean, you guys are rolling pretty well. I mean, honestly, yeah. if you, this is... you know, it's, it's once you get to 100, it's like we're at 100, and then you just pass it and you're like, okay, well, whatever. And so it's, <laughs> right. it's just hat now it's... at this point. My will to live is very strong. Somebody already told me it was dumb and to stop doing it. And I was like, mm-hmm. no, no, it just makes you <laughs> want to do more. Like, that's the, that's the, I'm, we're, Dave and I are just stubborn. We can't yeah. stop. At this point. Yeah. Well, it's funny because we don't really, we don't, I'm like, who listens to our show? Apparently somebody does, but you know, we just, people. we've always said it. We've always said it's really for our own entertainment. And if we can make other people smile too, great. But if Pretty not, much. Eh, yes. whatever. that's whatever. exactly it's, what we do. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's pretty um, much it. great. Uh, minds several, alike. It's several weeks ago. We had, uh, we had, um, the soundtrack of life podcast mm-hmm. on Matt Mink, who's a yep. friend of the deuce cast as well. And he said like, Hey, we're just doing this for us. Like we don't plan on growing at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I like to think um, of it as Steve and I are going to do this despite if anybody's listening or not. That's or, right. Or right. maybe to spite the three people that listen. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> well, it's funny because I, I I do a Disney podcast too as well, Stephen, and we've done this now. We're heading we're close to episode two hundred on that one. Um, wow. I podcast a lot. Um, and so uh-huh. one of my favorite iTunes comment ever. We got a one star rating, and it simply says they're not as funny as they think they are. Yeah. I love that because Jen and I both are like, "Yes, we are." <laughs> so, uh, that's when you're hilarious. like, "I have achieved greatness." Oh that yeah, is we, we awesome. I, like I put it on Facebook or put it on the stories. I'm like, "Check out this comment. This is amazing." <laughs> so, <laughs> it was. Awesome. I mean, so Steve, Steve and I connected after I think I had maybe done what were you episode three? I, like, I think you were a guest, yeah. and so, then yeah. you know here and there. We hadn't seen each other for 20 years. Oh, wow. we, yeah. we went to culinary school together. We had not seen oh, cool. each other in person yeah. since graduation. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, if you want to keep doing it, like I'm going to keep doing it. Right. <laughs> I just kind of weasel my way in and said, oh, that would be fun. Let's talk food, Melissa. And no, no. Her and I, like, we were always on the same uh, level, you know, like we yeah. just always talk. Food. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it, it was totally kismet. There was no weaseling here. Um, so. <laughs> It, it, it's, it was meant to be for sure. Well, oh, yeah. so listeners and watchers of the podcast, if you are still with us um, this far, uh, you might be wondering why we have the host of a movie podcast on with us. Well, A, it's because I like these dudes. So too bad, so sad. Um, you're stuck with it. Yeah. And B, it's because um, there is a lot of cinema out there that has culinary ties. There are a lot of iconic movie food moments is how I'm going to phrase it. And so we're here tonight to unpack all of that. And, you know, most of all have a good time. Like we always do. Um, Mm -hmm. But I kind of want to start with some trivia questions. Mm. Um, There's not that many, but I'm interested to know what everybody thinks. And so Steve, you're welcome to chime in here too. Um, We'll start with, uh, these are multiple choice. All right. Y'all ready? Ready. All right. Uh, these two ingredients are the main ingredients in fake blood for horror movies. So we have A, corn syrup and corn starch, B, cow's blood, or C, honey and raspberries. Mm-hmm. What I do wish you think? It was the second. It's, cor- it's corn syrup and corn yeah. starch. Yeah. Yeah. Corn syrup and corn starch. It's the first one. Yeah. I was thinking you were going to say chocolate syrup, but that was second. I was hoping it was going to be the second <laughs> option, but you, you know it's not. Cow's blood? Is that what you yeah. thought? Yeah. Oh, well, uh, no, I was hoping it would be, but I know it's not. <laughs> it down. You're so sick. Um, so although <laughs> they have actually used pig's blood in some films mm. for fake blood, um, mm. the answer is corn syrup and cornstarch. So nice job. <laughs> they will add more cornstarch when um, a blood clot is needed. Is that Undefeated so far. Awesome. <laughs> it's so yeah. terrible. All right. So a uh, quick story. I was involved in a number of like church theatrical Mm. kind of hell Mm -hmm. productions back in the day. Mm -hmm. And it Mm -hmm. was also not beyond us in person to use cornflakes as kind of like innards, which I thought was really interesting. Interesting. Yeah. There's nothing, there's nothing like standing outside in in October with like corn syrup, (laughs) red food coloring (laughs) and like cornflakes, like caked on a head wound. It's just, yeah, it's fantastic. Mm. There's nothing like it. And here I thought you were going to say we used real human blood. We were all about it. <laughs> it was a backwoods church. We're not that kind of church. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, some people didn't survive the snake bite. So what else are you going to do with it? We got to hide it. That's exactly like, what, what, are you, what are you going to do? What it's are you, called, I don't it's know called how... repurposing, Stephen. Repurposing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's sustainability. That's what it is. <laughs> and organic. It's organic. <laughs> all right. So the next question is, when a movie set needs perfectly creamy and fluffy mashed potatoes, what do they use? Mm. A, instant mashed potato mix, B, diluted joint compound, or C, Elmer's glue? Hmm. What do you think? Elmer's glue. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm leaning Elmer's glue, although the second one sounds possible as well. (laughs) All right. This is a twofold answer. So if nobody's eating the mashed potatoes, they actually use joint compound. They dilute it with rubbing alcohol. Okay. It, it will build on top of each other to make like fluffy mashed potatoes. And if somebody needs to eat it, they they just use instant. But like fun fact, they will dilute the instant mashed potato mix with water instead of milk 
so that if they need multiple takes, it won't go sour. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. That's because fair. according according to federal law on a movie set, if actors are going to eat food, it has to be 100% real for safety reasons. Right? That makes sense. Is yeah. it so, edible? I mean, I mean, I ate that when I was in pre Dude, I ate so much paste. <laughs> <laughs> Rubber cement. I was a rubber cement kid. I went hard. The, I was uh, putting it on my hands and it peeling off and it off my hands. <laughs> that explains the hockey hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. What can I say? It's like hooves and then like hooves, but you're like different age, right? right. So... <laughs> All right, next. Um, so for wedding cakes in movies. What do they make the layers out of? A, plastic, B, cardboard, or C, styrofoam? What mm. it God. I'd guess styrofoam. I'm going to go cardboard. Okay. Okay. What do you think, Steve? Uh, styrofoam. Styrofoam. The answer is styrofoam. <sighs> yes. Uh, so I was so close. They, I was they actually <laughs> will make, they will make decoy um, wedding cakes also in person. Like if you have a wedding and you have the kitchen cut your cake in the back and you just have a display and there's like one decoy piece mm -hmm. for the bride and groom to cut, it's the same thing. They use styrofoam. Okay. So super interesting. Um, the frosting sticks really well to that because it's a little bit porous and right. it has a little bit of texture on it to hold on um, to that texture or to well, that. And um, I'm always trying to think ahead to the hot lights under when you're filming something like mm, for sure. on set, what's going to be durable for that. So styrofoam would work mm -hmm. too, I guess. I mean, yeah, styrofoam yeah. works. So plastic can get, a, it can warp just a little bit if it's mm -hmm. the right amount of heat and humidity. Um, so yeah, super smart. And then cardboard will typically, it will collapse underneath like a hot movie yeah. set or like photography lights, but cardboard is a really good stand in for like making pancakes stand up straight like in a photo shoot. Like they'll put like okay. a cardboard desk and a, a little disc in between each pancake. Hmm. All right. Um, up next, to keep food looking fresh and shiny for on-set scenes, this material is sprayed on. You have A, resin, B, hairspray, or C, shellac. To keep them looking shiny, shellac. Yeah, to keep it look shiny. We'll shellac. go shellac. Okay. Yeah, I'd go shellac. Also, resin would harden it, so I'd go shellac. But I, I want to say hairspray, but I feel like if you're going to keep it shiny, yeah, shellac. Hairspray yeah. is also flammable too, and I feel like there's a risk there, right. <laughs> um, depending yeah. on what's going on. This, you know, if you're making backdraft two, hairspray may not be what you want to go with. <laughs> there is a backdraft too. Oh, exactly. Well, <laughs> so shellac is the correct answer, um, and then believe it or not, so they will they will use like a diluted um, shellac, like mm -hmm. a kind of a concentration. But believe it or not, you can also use hairspray to achieve the same effect. Um, the only problem is, is that some foods like dairy or things with alcohol will react with the hairspray. Sometimes it'll cause bubbling and sometimes it'll cause a discoloration. So mm, I thought that was interesting, fun. right? And then finally, for the last question, I have the following food item is often used as a stand-in for ice cream in photo and film. Mm -hmm. A is frosting, C is shortening, or sorry, B is shortening, and C is cream cheese. What do you think? Hmm. I'm going to go shortening. I'll say frosting. Yeah. Okay. Man, I'm going to say cream cheese. Yeah, all three different. So, <laughs> trick, trick question. It's all three, depending on the condition. Yes. <laughs> so shortening We're is all the right. best, right? Like shortening, shortening is the best really for keeping, if you need um, a, a, a stationary shot, like in a bowl, shortening is mm -hmm. the best. It's typically pretty heat resistant. Like nobody's shooting a film and it's, you know, 90 degrees or 90 degrees or above. If they're shooting right. some sort of stationary food, food shot, they're not going to do it outside. Right. Cream cheese is the best for stacking. So if you need multiple uh, scoops of ice cream, like exactly. decoy scoops of ice cream on a cone, and then frosting is the best if you need like toppings to adhere to it. So my my inner food nerd like really enjoyed figuring out these questions. <laughs> so, oh, I nerd. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I would totally eat a cone of cream cheese. Mm. Uh, so, I would too. Yeah. <laughs> in all fairness. So fun story. I, I worked at one retirement community where we had um, kind of like a front desk, like a hostess stand of, um, you, obviously the hostess was there to seat our residents, but 
they would have display items that were like that night specials. And a lot of times we would have a Sunday or we would have like a stacked cone with some toppings. Um, and it was a treat, it was usually like a Friday or Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And I had this disgruntled dishwasher who did not know that we made the ice cream out of shortening for the display. Oh, no. oh, and he yes. was like dramatically quitting. And he was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to take this ice cream cone and there's nothing you can do about it. And I was like, all right, like <laughs> you should totally take that. And just to watch this guy, he was a jerk. I dare you like, eat it right now. This guy's face, take a bite out of it and go I like, bet you <laughs> Just like I'm pretty sure that there's no such thing as a dishwasher that isn't disgruntled. I mean, sometimes. <laughs> so you could have just said dishwasher. And well, I mean, we I guess when known. they start, they're disgruntled, but they become dis <laughs> along the dis way. So yeah. yeah. Like I said, that, I'd be the one egging them on. I bet you wouldn't. No, I bet you wouldn't. No. But, oh, he did it! He did it! <laughs> the the easiest way to get me to do something is to tell me I won't do it. So, yeah, same here. Like, you can't do that. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I'm. You my, won't my, send me a hundred dollar bill, Melissa. You won't do it. I don't believe you, you will. You won't do it. You won't pop a hundred dollar bill in the mail. It's already in the mail. What are you talking about? My only restaurant job was a dishwasher at a barbecue restaurant, and it was I was disgruntled, very disgruntled. <laughs> <laughs> you were disgruntled. Yes. Hey, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> well. Mm -hmm. I have a super great team now and they love working for me, but like, yeah, dishes suck. Like everybody, everybody who's ever made I mean, it have in management yeah. and yeah, it, it's a necessary evil, I guess, but everybody who's ever been in a management position, like should wash dishes. At some time. I, I gotta be honest with you. I worked at a restaurant in high school and that was a small hometown restaurant and we, and I served table or work waited tables. It was fine. But there were some nights when I'm like, you know what? I wouldn't mind just being back there on the dishwasher. Nobody bothering me. I'm not oh. talking to anybody. All I'm doing is putting dishes in the thing and taking them out. It's all I'm doing. Yep. I don't have to think about it. Not all the time, but every now and then I'm like, you know what? That I just don't feel like it'd be a bad idea. Dude, and, oh, look, it's dirty. I'll just stick it back in there. I'm not doing it. It is work. A <laughs> plus B equals C. And I'm not going to lie. There's about 30 minutes a week where I'm like, oh, yeah, we don't have a mid dishwasher today. Like, guess I'm going to be on dishes, y'all, for yep. like 20 minutes. I put a little AirPod in, put a little Pandora yep. on. Yeah. I can just shut everybody out. And it's the same thing, Dave. Like, I don't pre soak anything. If when it's still so dirty, I'm in the machine again. Not, <laughs> not care. You're right. You Pop, just get to tune everyone out. Pop my uh, cassette copy of Def Leppard's Hysteria in my Walkman and put my headphones on my head. <laughs> I'm like, Hysteria. I'm washing dishes. Can you feel it? Yeah, it's great. So. It's kind of one dimensional. It's kind of like that guy only has one arm. Yeah. yeah. It's very disarming. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard that joke? What has nine arms and sucks? <laughs> Def Leppard. <laughs> 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 that's <was> terrible <laughs> all right <clears throat> but i but i started it um all right so we're gonna talk we're gonna talk about a little bit of everything right so we're gonna talk mm. about iconic food themes in cinema we're gonna talk mm. about you know maybe some favorite food movies um but it's gonna be all over the place so steve why don't you kick us off like, are we starting about like what our favorite food movie is? Or it doesn't matter. You know, you know it's going to end up being like forty minutes of a good time. Fred so you're Harlo. I like yeah. it. Yeah, yes. Ratatouille. Yes. Oh, there you oh, go. Yeah. I love we'll it. There, yeah. Ratatouille. I actually like that they uh, were all about food in that one. Um, they make the food look really good, despite the fact that it's being put together by a rat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I liked it. You know, like. I have never made ratatouille look that pretty in my life, but I have also <laughs> not made ratatouille since culinary school. So there's also that. Well, yes. do you have a little rat under your chef hat pulling your hair and maybe uh, then... under, under my scotch hat? Okay. I, I was going to say, angle. if you haven't had the rat, no wonder ratatouille is not as good as you wanted to make. You wanted <laughs> well, to make. it's because oh. the rat's always making me drink more scotch, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you're just starting out, it's like mouse to TV, right? It's you know, ratatouille. Like, you got to get there. <laughs> <laughs> True. Steve said no, he's not gonna laugh at this show. <laughs> he's not gonna give me a pity giggle. That's terrible. All right. I gave you um, a smile. A good smile. Mikey, have you ever eaten ratatouille? Yeah, I think so. It's like cold soup, right? No, that's fishy swallow. Oh, that's I've never had swallow. <laughs> I've never had that's that. Fishy swallow. That's fishy swallow. No, I probably haven't Man. had it. I probably haven't had it. Yeah. Steve, when's the last time you ate ratatouille? I think culinary school, yeah, it's been like almost 20 Seriously? years. Seriously. Not 20 years. Really? Yeah. 
I used to use that as like a pocket veg of the day special. Oh yeah. <laughs> like a lazy. So you guys, if you don't know, I mean, the film does a pretty good idea, or a good like depiction, but I mean, really in layman's terms, it's like you dice an eggplant, an onion, mm -hmm. maybe a tomato if you're feeling bougie, but like a bell oh, pepper, a zucchini, a yellow squash in marinara sauce with a bunch of garlic and herbs. Well, you were on our show uh, sometime last year, year before something talking about, we were talking about like kitchen movies, chef movies. Yes. And, stuff, and yes, you had you mentioned Ratatouille year. and you were saying Ratatouille actually has one of the closest depictions of a real kitchen and how a real kitchen or yeah. that style of kitchen, how it would operate. Yeah. Like, you know, you were surprised like, yeah, it was a cartoon it's, and how authentic that kitchen is. It's a super legit depiction of a brigade kitchen. That's what mm -hmm. I said, Steve. What do you think? I, I think the kitchen, yeah, it really depicts yeah. a lot of what actually happens. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just wow. cleaned up a little bit more, if that makes right. sense. Right. Um, yeah. There's a lot more um, off-color jokes and off-color uh, <laughs> vocabulary. Uh -huh. But, I mean, it, in in the kitchen, yeah, if you're not showing the chef respect, I mean, you might as well be finding another job, stuff like that. Mm. And, it, you know, I can remember – you know, if I ever disrespected the chef or made an off-color joke yeah. to the chef, I was probably in dish pit for about a week, you know? <laughs> so, mm. But at the same time, you know, like it was always, a, it's a good learning experience, you know? Um, a good kitchen also teaches you as well. So I think that mm -hmm. also makes a good chef. So, you know. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you guys, if you ever want to do ratatouille at home, like I really think you can add a pound of Italian sausage to that and it's an easy meal. Oh, that sounds so good. Some, some rice or some pasta underneath it. You've got so all what is it? Like, what's the veggies. base, though? Is it like chicken broth or what? I mean, what are marinara. they? Marinara. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I will never do ratatouille at home, ever, because there's nothing in that I really want to eat. However, <laughs> I do want to try it one day. So next time, yeah. like, I'm, I'm going to be at the Flower really Garden really? Festival at Epcot, and they have it, like, mm -hmm. in some of the carts. And I may I may spend eight bucks and just try it. Okay, Knowing I'll take one bite and be like, and throw I'm like <laughs> you you can start a patreon and amazing. i will i will <laughs> indulge your like disney food purchases i'll pay for that yeah for sure for sure oh, that'd be an yeah. interesting patreon give me money <laughs> so i can eat food at disney world <laughs> which actually I will when, too. when this yeah. episode comes out i will be at disney world likely eating so there we go <laughs> well there you go there you go <laughs> No. See, I'd be using the wrong platform. I'd be using like OnlyFans and be like, "All right, who's gonna pay for me to eat all this food?" But while I'm barefoot, fans because it's gonna be food related. <laughs> Read the comments. Eat it slower. <laughs> oh, all right, Mikey, oh. eat that hot dog slower. Oh my god, eat that hockey hot dog slower. Oh man. <laughs> So Hockey you get hot dog like is going like, to be my OnlyFans name, actually. <laughs> Hockey hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> Eat it with your feet. Where, Wait, what is this podcast? What are we doing? What's happening? Yeah, this wow, is, this took a hard turn. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 anything. It's anything goes. We don't we don't have rules. Moving uh, along to the next movie, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Who gets David, pick, pick the next yeah. movie. Dave, what you got? Well, I was actually thinking about this earlier, like, you know, because I didn't know where we were going to go because the top five or just movie scenes or whatever. But I will oh, say, if you guys have ever seen Inglorious Bastards, um, yes. I learned this not too long ago. There's a scene where Hans Landa, brilliantly played by Christoph Waltz, won an Oscar. Uh, he is mm -hmm. sitting with Shoshana, who um, is Marilyn Laurent. She owns the theater and, and everything. She's mm -hmm. trying to she's trying to get the Nazis to come there to the theater so mm -hmm. she can burn the whole place down. Right. And he's eating a pastry in front of her. And and what I found out was that back in those days, the pastries in that area were made with like like pig lard, which is mm. not kosher. And so one of the things he was doing by eating those pastries mm -hmm. is testing her to see if she would eat the pastry because he wanted to find out is she to a Jew or not. Jewish or not. Is she a Jewish and everything. Whoa. And honestly, I don't remember if she ate the pastry. I really don't. I need to see it again. Um, she eats it. But but she eats it. it was it's just one of those little things that Tarantino put in there, like to figure out, you know, is she Jewish? I need to know this because is she a traitor? Because he suspects That's her deep. for a while, and then of course they have the the whole thing there at the theater and everything just collapses or whatever. But uh, just thought it was wow. a brilliant little in, in, Easter egg of writing, wow. uh, something yeah. I would have never thought about it until i read about it and i was like oh oh that makes complete and total sense and so yeah, yeah dude i i love that movie do y'all know adam sandler turned that movie down he did no. uh, yeah yeah yeah, he did turn it down. Whoa. He did turn it down. Uh, yeah. For the bear Jew. For the bear Jew. Yeah, the one that they Eli wanted Roth. Yeah. Really? Yep. yep. 
but I don't know if it was like scheduling or something. I don't think it was just him not him saying. Yeah, no. I, I don't think he could commit to it, but yeah. like they wanted him to do it. Yeah, um, it, it would have been a, completely it's different. Probably making one of his goofy movies. No, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It is a bit more authentic though with Eli Roth. I mean, Eli Roth yeah. is actually oh yeah Jewish, well, and because you don't look at him not... and think Water Boy and Happy Mad saying. Happy Gilmore, or whatever you think. You know, Eli Roth, the director. If you if you even know who he is, a lot of people don't because he's right. not that yes. well known uh face wise and so i think it worked really well with with him in it yeah i think it probably, worked i would imagine he probably would have like done one of his goofy faces you know like the whole mm -hmm. you know and, yeah oh, I I'm heard 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 you. you know something yeah. weird like uh, i've got a bed mr bad <laughs> <laughs> it it is too hot for some damn bear jew to be running around yeah, stop yeah. looking at me nazi stop looking at me <laughs> There's your tagline for the episode. <laughs> yes, I like it. <laughs> See, no rules. <laughs> wow. Mikey, what you got? Um, I mean, if we're just saying, you know, movies that we like uh, yeah. that involve food, I really like Chef. I think that's a great movie. Yeah. That was um, gonna be my next pick too. Oh yeah. my bad, dude. Yeah, I mean, oh, no, I, I, I mean, love oh, yeah. John Favreau in that movie, and just that one just has a lot of heart to it. I think just because he is passionate about you know, the food truck thing. He's so passionate about food that he gets out of the restaurant industry, starts his own food truck type situation, yep. knowing that the money won't be there. I mean, knowing that it's going to be difficult and yet he still does it. And so yeah. I, I don't know. I oh, just yeah. like more aspects of the, just the food. Um, but I, I, it's a great movie. I, I love it. And it's oh, Texas. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. It's in Texas. <laughs> yeah. That's like <laughs> kind of Texas, my homeland yeah. also. I mean, most of my family's from Texas. So, I mean, you know. I have some Texas kinship there. Number one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I, I love the fact that he made he makes those sandwiches look so good. I always tell Melissa, like, if I ever go back into the restaurant industry, like, it's just going to be a sandwich shop. It's going to be whatever the hell I want. Oh, yes. And I was actually just in Miami. So I told my wife, we have to get a Cuban. So oh, nice. you would think, like, for, for being there for, like, a couple days, like, Cubans, Cubans, Cuban sandwiches. I only had, like, one Mm -hmm. so it was good though it was really really good so it satisfied my craving it in that movie i always go back to like the just the care that he he puts into making that grilled cheese sandwich mm -hmm. it's just like that's really something a chef would do you know like that's mm -hmm. just yeah. kind of every detail and the love that goes into it and um Dude, Steve, you're talking about Cubans. I used to work at this place in Austin. We made like a really outrageous Cuban sandwich. We cured and, mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, we brined the pork butt uh, in house yeah. and we would mm. shave it really thin. We used the authentic bread, but we kind of did a, a different thing. We would run a um, like kosher dill pickles and red onions like through a, yeah. um, it's called a tomato punch, you guys. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's like this machine that you can, you see like those veg toppers on TikTok, but everything comes out like super diced. And so we would let the diced red onion would like pickle in the kosher dill pickle juice. We would put that relish on the Cuban with uh, Dijon mustard and a little chipotle aioli, like one mm -hmm. on one side, one on the other with like ham, Swiss, and this brine pork butt. And when I say that I ate my weight in Cuban sandwiches when I was 20, <laughs> like I did <laughs> I did. I Melissa, you'll actually be very proud of me because when I had my Cuban sandwich, I ate the pickles too. I ate pickles. Nice. Well, you gotta yeah. eat the pickles on a Cuban. Why don't, yeah. You guys don't know. Like, he doesn't like dill and he doesn't like you don't like, yeah. I I, oh, I know. I listen. That. I know. Yeah. Pickles, yeah. <laughs> Now, the one one thing that I didn't anticipate that I should have being on this podcast is how hungry it was going to make me. This is this is dangerous. <laughs> that, that that hockey hot dog ain't lasting. <laughs> <laughs> so at, at work today, I got a half roasted chicken and some mashed potatoes that came back from a table. There was nothing wrong with it. They just the server punched in the wrong entree, and I had like. 13 minutes between the time it came back and like I needed to be on a call and it was going to be like continuous calls for like three hours. And I was like, okay, I think I can eat this in 14 minutes. And yeah, I sure did. 
I yeah. sure did. <laughs> I like, like I went after it. It was so good. We taught you well, Melissa. Yes. It was so good. good times. It was so good. You're like a gremlin when they throw the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, and, you know, that's the thing, Mikey, is like there are so many food scenes in movies that I oh, feel yeah. like they oh, yeah. go really unnoticed. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's kind of like my first reference that I want to talk about is the breakfast scene in Twister. At hmm. Aunt Meg's house. Oh. Okay. They, okay. They they go over there. They have steak. They have eggs. The guy makes a comment. He was like, "Oh, this lemonade's homemade." And then they're like plopping the mashed potatoes on the plate, <laughs> and he puts gravy on there, and he's like, "It's its own food group. This gravy is its own food group." Yes. We're just like, it's dude, awesome. and, and a runny egg. I'm like, I want steak, oh, mashed dude. potatoes, gravy, eggs. Yeah, and homemade yeah. lemonade yeah. for breakfast. What That's what I want. <laughs> like, what am I doing with my life? Michael right Waffle House is open if you want to meet me at the. Uh, <laughs> I know we're probably going to have to do uh, that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the, the the largest the the most steaks sold by any restaurant in the country, Waffle House. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. No <laughs> okay, fun fact: I have never been to a Waffle House. In my life. What? I know. <laughs> we're in Texas, Texas though. They're Steven. there. Yeah. Well, I'm in West Texas, and there's no Waffle Houses unless I go to like Dallas. So, is there yeah. a 24 hour like breakfast place like that, like Waffle House? I mean, there's a coffee, house, coffee right? kettles and huddle houses all over the place. Denny's, yeah. Denny's, his I mean, shoppy. Denny's is like Waffle House put on a, a like a like a cheap suit and tried to be impressive and just <laughs> that's what Denny's. Is. It's good. It's Denny's, fine, but it's Denny's you know. is Waffle House going to a job interview wearing their yeah. dad's suit. And it's yeah. the like, sleeves are like too long. It's like Guineas, who do you think you are? Come on, you know. It's, I it feel personally it. attacked right now because I've done that in my life. Not really. <laughs> while, while interviewing at a Denny's, nonetheless, that's crazy. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. Hey, y'all. I've been I've been to Chick Fil A biscuit school. Like I'm not I'm not over here bragging. <laughs> yeah. yeah nice. Yeah. I would eat a lot of chicken biscuits. <laughs> Same. They're good. They're good. I was going to say, you know what other movie I thought was actually rather impressive? and Because I'm like a big sandwich guy, and it was uh, Spanglish. So speaking of Adam yes. Sandler. Adam Sandler, you know, yeah. Doing the whole fine dining Michelin star uh, sandwich and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. you, you know, he actually like hung out with Thomas Keller, and Thomas Keller like taught him how to make like a he trained sandwich. the French Laundry for that role. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I loved wow. the way that they just like filmed everything up close and his hands like cutting and all that mm. fun stuff. And it was funny because when I saw that movie, I was with a friend of mine who went to film school. So she's like dissecting all the film stuff and I'm dissecting all the food stuff. So we were just talking about it the entire time, you yeah. know? So, yeah. Love that. I thought that was kind of cool. Oh, I, I love how with with food, there's sometimes there's like two angles. One that food mm. is is kind of a sub character. Like it's there's no yeah. particular sitting down scene, but there's food. Mm. It makes me think of Ocean's Eleven. Brad Pitt is yes. eating in every single scene. All yeah, yeah he is. And at the end yes. of it is when he finally goes, "Oh, I eat too much." I mean, just like he pounds <laughs> it. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, so food is not necessarily a character, but it's part of the movie, part of his character. Versus, mm -hmm. you have your breakfast scenes like Twister or the breakfast scene at Reservoir Dogs, where you're introducing mm -hmm. all of the characters around mm -hmm. the table. Which mm -hmm. ones are actually? They're all criminals, but which one's kind of the nice criminal? Which one's the douchebag? Yeah. Which is Stephen Shimmy's <laughs> character doesn't typically yeah. like, alter. Tarantino job, you know? loves a food scene, and so yeah. there's that. And then of course you've got movies made around food like Julie and Julia uh, with Amy mm -hmm. Adams, and which I absolutely love. Um, or I was thinking of the documentary Hero Dreams of Sushi, which is an incredible documentary. Oh uh, yeah, that's um, a good documentary. If you guys have never seen it, it is so fantastic um and he's 98 years old now and at last report yeah. he was still serving sushi a yeah. little slower but still serving sushi well, because it's a, it's an art like it's yeah, an it elevated is. art it yeah. is i mean and in the documentary for those listeners who've never seen it go find this about it's about 80 minutes and it's basically a documentary about a restaurant in japan and this guy is so mastered at sushi like people take the apprentice under him and you'd think it'd be easy or you know you, over time or whatever and he's so like shooting people down all the time. Nope, not good. Not good enough. Not good enough. People were training for years to make the right sushi in order to serve at this restaurant, which has 10 seats and that's it, you know, and they take cash only. And it's, it's, it's an incredible documentary. It really is. Um, 
It's amazing. I, I got a shout, a shout out, just a, a scene that like stuck with me as a kid. Mm -hmm. Temple mm -hmm. of Doom, chilled monkey brains. Yeah. That, that might be like the first <laughs> scene like that I remember as a kid. Just like nice. seeing that and just being like totally grossed out. And then the soup with the eyeballs floating in it. I mean, mm -hmm. just that that particular. Scene. Well, the soup looks good, and then suddenly the eyeballs pop. And then up. the eyeballs <laughs> so, out. Yeah, they float I mean, to the like, bob to the top. Yep. Like, yep. Yeah. Here's yeah. monkey brains. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I just I, I love that type of thing I mean, because, like David said, I mean that's not like totally integral to the movie, right? But it really makes you feel like you're there when you're seeing that type of stuff, and it just you feel like how indy probably felt or not right. indy necessarily but uh the the girl she was probably just so grossed out or whatever that she just you know kate just, capshaw yeah yeah it makes you feel like you're there um yeah and andy was her name andy or charlie no it wasn't andy or charlie it was something else that's why i said the girl because yeah. i couldn't remember her name <laughs> I can't, I can't remember the remember. character's name it's not andy or charlie though uh close enough <laughs> well you know but you have a really good point dave about how sometimes the food is the main character mm -hmm. like sometimes it's the hero of every shot and sometimes it's just like to move the plot a yeah. lot and yeah. so you're talking about like being grossed out with the chill bunky brains <laughs> this this isn't even on this like my list but it just made me think of it like that scene in matilda where they make the little boy eat the chocolate cake and it's just like mm -hmm. over, over and over again. And even I've the, never seen this movie. I've never what? seen it. David Toller. Yeah, I was too were... old in the nineties to see it. I mean, it wasn't my my jam back then. And You're so not too I just old now. Never not got, too late. I, I never got around. I need to circle back to it. I've never seen it. Okay, so. you you have got. So I know on your show, you guys um, assign movies. You're like, oh I'm, yeah, this is true. Like you've got to see it. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's. Well, it's a really great scene. And even the director debated on like, do we really need the mm -hmm. scene? But it ended up being like really iconic. Um, okay. So it's not only that, but there's a scene where Matilda is uh, making breakfast for herself and it has like a great score behind it. And she's mm -hmm. so spoiler alert. She's like a little girl. She has telepathic powers. Right. And so I've read I'm the not, wiki. I've I'm, seen right, I'm not spoiling anything because <laughs> you spoil everything before you watch it. So <laughs> Yes, <laughs> Plus the movie's like 38 yeah. years old, so I've had time. Like, I, mean, it's, I mean, she's like, she's like telling the Bisquick what to do, and she's it has a great. There's like a great couple songs in this montage. She's making breakfast, but mm -hmm. um, the lady's name in 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 Indy was Willie. Willie, yeah, I just looked at that. That's up. right, Willie yeah, Scott. Like, uh, I could not keep from looking it up. I was like, I have to know right now. Well, well yeah, I, I would not have been able. I knew it was a guy's name, like Andy I Charlie Willie. Able to pull it, so. <laughs> yes, I'm <he> old. Is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hold on, lady. He crazy. But there's this great, there's this great scene. She has parents that are uh, adoptive parents that are not so great, Dan and Vito. she's like kind of coming to yeah, yeah. Mm. Vito and uh, <laughs> Perlman. Yeah. And um, she's she's. She's finding her independence in the scene. It all has to do with breakfast food. It's a really sweet, it's a really sweet scene. Um, so you should totally watch it. But anyway. So, well, <laughs> well, let me ask you guys this. What's your favorite food? Oh, favorite if, food? Dessert or like, like food food? Just in general. like. Well, I mean, like my mom's homemade meatloaf is probably okay. my favorite yes. food like of all time. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sweet potato casserole. Okay. Oh, so, so like mine's always like my go-to is always pizza. Like if you mm -hmm. say what's your favorite food, first thing that I say is pizza. Right. Mm -hmm. Every time I go to to like a good pizzeria, I always have to try to recreate like uh was it Saturday Night Fever when John Travolta is eating his pizza? <laughs> double and pizza. And double stacking and <laughs> yes, you know, I'll yes. double stack it. I won't walk, you know, you know, right. going side to side and <laughs> whatnot. But... You can tell by the way I use my walk. Yeah, exactly. Oh, now, are you that. going? Are you going just cheese, or are you going like bougie, like <laughs> California style pizza, or any pizza? Oh, for me, it's always mushroom. Mushroom pizza is mushroom, always my yes. favorite. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. mushroom pizzas I are. I feel fantastic. you there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But I can always go for a good cheese pizza. I'm the uh, yeah. I'm the pariah that likes ham and pineapple. So no, I do. I am all about that. <laughs> I don't ham's good. Either. Yeah, no. I'd even I'll even eat an anchovy on a pizza. I don't mind. Well, we Dude. like mushroom because we're a fun guy. So hey. you know, <laughs> hey, but, oh, do you guys I give demerits you do, on your podcast? Because you need to start giving him demerits. That's like three of those things that he's done tonight. <laughs> 
I have a gong somewhere. Let me go find it. Uh, I can imagine <laughs> next time you all eat pizza, y'all are gonna try to do the Saturday night fever walk yeah. and mm. eat. Oh yeah. And then y'all well, who's to say I don't do the walk anyway? Walking through the mall. Uh, everywhere, huh? everywhere he goes. <laughs> but it's the platform shoes that make it Dave. <laughs> like, Very yeah. true. Very true. Well, and you're right, though, because I was thinking about this, too, where food does bring people together. And the great example is in the movie It Takes Two with Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. Oh, yeah, there is a it's a summer camp movie and there's a food fight, which I don't know how many food fights have ever actually existed. I've Dude. never been in a food fight. I've never known anybody that was in a food. There's fight. a lot of movies just Dude. flinging Dude. through the air or whatever. Um, yeah. Cleanup is incredible. But that is where Steve Gutenberg and Kirstie Alex characters connected, really connected. They threw food in each other and they're laughing at each other or whatever. And it's like, oh. There might be a spark here as they're having to rescue one of the kids from the uh, from the horrible family putting them to work in the in the the junkyard. So great movie. I feel great like movie. every podcast that Dave has guested on, he tries to bring it takes two up. Like he he'll it doesn't matter what the subject matter is. Like he'll find a way to angle it takes two in. True somehow. story. In our apartment, we we have the Deuce, which is my, where Michael and I live with two came, other guys. The name of the podcast. Came and from, yeah, yeah, the Deuce cast. Uh, and and so like. <laughs> I had the movie on VHS and it came up missing. Like the, the, the clamshell was there, but the movie disappeared. And I always theorized that Mikey was like, I don't want this in my house. I'm getting rid of it. (laughs) Michael's always said it. I never did it. I didn't touch the movie, man. You know, but uh, I'm always like, did he actually get rid of this movie? Because he didn't want some girl coming over before he met Ashley and like, oh, you like this movie? No, no, no. (laughs) This isn't mine. I swear. I just didn't want the, I didn't, I didn't want the Dateline NBC to guy to come over and see that movie. I I just have the movie for the articles. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Take a seat over here. It's a great movie. Yeah, exactly. Chris Take a seat. I found It Takes Two in your house. What's this about? Hold the transcripts up. I see here Steve Gutenberg is throwing food on Chrissy Alley. What is this all about? It's a good scene. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> so, the troubling part is at the time this movie was made, Elizabeth Olsen was like three or four. And now she's incredibly hot. She's one of my favorite people in, in Hollywood. But I'm like, I can't. I don't acknowledge Elizabeth Olsen existed back then. because she, she was in that movie? But she's not in that movie. She's not in the movie. She's not in oh, the movie. Yeah. That's her sister. It's her older she's, sister. This is why I will never complete the the Elizabeth Olsen oeuvre because she's in a movie called How the, How the West Was Fun with Mary Kate oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah, Olsen. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen it and I won't see it. I'm not even going to try to look it up because I don't want, if I get arrested or something tomorrow, I don't want them looking through my, my hard drive going, <laughs> look at him looking at this movie, looking for this Smart. film. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'll never complete, uh, I'll never complete her entire film work. <laughs> so. Um, Dave, would you call <laughs> would you call the summer camp food fight a mystery meat cute? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, that works. <laughs> that works. Yeah. Just saying. Uh-oh. Who's Uh-oh. Going? There was on one it. in. I think there was one in Parent Trap. Maybe there's um, one in everything. Yeah, in every summer camp movie, yeah. there's like, a food like, fight. Heavyweight. Ernest Gibson goes to camp. Yeah, heavyweights. Yeah. Like a oh yeah, heavyweights. And yeah. somebody uh, always yells uh, food, fight! food fight, and that's what signifies <laughs> you. You now all have permission to throw everything yeah. you want to throw. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, just yeah. gonna throw it out there. If you yell out food fight, it doesn't always work. I got no. in trouble so yeah. many times when I was in elementary <laughs> for yelling out food I fight. No one threw a single thing, and then I was one that got in trouble. Yeah, I tried that at a, at a wake once for a, like an old relative, and it didn't work either. It was not it was not received well. Um, so yeah, I'm like, I'm like I would have wanted this if I were in the casket, but whatever. So, I'm blame people. Wow, wow! You did That's... this, Melissa. You did this. <laughs> You knew what you were getting into having us on your show. Blame me for everything all the time. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Mikey, what you got? (laughs) Oh, uh, I mean, uh, to try and bring it a bit more serious, I think. uh, I think, like, most recently, because you know I have to bring up anything with Nick Cage. A pig is just a masterpiece. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I freaking love Pig. I just think that is such a fantastic movie. And the uh, -the behind-the-scenes stuff, the time that he took to, like, learn... Mm -hmm. about you know he could have easily just like phoned it in just done the scenes but he actually like wanted to learn how to cook like a professional chef and took the time and put the work in to actually understand um and it was much it's much deeper than anything i can understand but just like the relationship that a chef has with with the meals that they're cooking i can't ever understand that but that movie kind of almost does a good job of letting you in that world just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just love that movie so much. It is so good. 
I thought he should have gotten Great nominated movie. for everything for that movie, and this <laughs> didn't happen. So it didn't happen. He was nominated for a couple of deuces, but I don't think he won. So and he did not. No, he did not. Steve, did you see that movie? I, I, I've, I think so. It was a long time ago, though. Gotta, no, it would have been a couple. It's just like two or three years old. Yeah, like yeah, I feel like that's just still a long time, though. Is me. that a long time ago? <laughs> I barely remember Gosh. what I said five minutes ago at the time. So, you know. Okay. Last week Steve can't time. remember when this podcast started. And he's like, is this still going? What's going? 2021 <laughs> yeah. actually is when it came out. So that movie's now four, three years yeah. old. Yeah, so. I guess it is. Yeah. That. It's pretty old, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Really Anything time, before though. the pandemic, I guess. or right. Time goes by fast yeah. when you're slowly dying. So Exactly. You know what movie would have been? a lot of fun i'm sure to film even though everything was fake was uh was it charlie and the chocolate factory or willy wonka and the chocolate yeah factory? willy yeah. wonka yeah, yeah. The, original. the original yes with yes, gene wilder original. yes i right. love that one because you know the schnozberries taste like schnozberries mm-hmm. yes <laughs> That the, as a kid, when you see that chocolate river, you're like, I want in that now. <laughs> mm. I want that. I, I, I want that. River. Yeah. Well, really in, until that. you like you grow up a little bit and then you attend one too many weddings where they have a chocolate fountain, the chocolate fountain. and you see a, a kid does like this <laughs> and then they do like that. And you're like, oh, no, gosh. I'm all set. <laughs> like, I'm good. Yeah. No. <clears throat> There's a place in Alabama, and I'm sure you guys have seen heard of it called Golden Corral. Mm. We have um, it in it Texas, is, yeah. It's a yeah. buffet mm. place. They've got a chocolate fountain at times. No. I would not. It, and that's <laughs> that's the kind of place that it. you I go. I feel like I would need a tetanus shot and you, a yeah. speed shot after doing that. <laughs> you eat your food. You don't question where it came from. You don't question how it's cooked. You just eat it. If you look on the wall and the, and the, and the, the, the health department grade says like 90 or above, don't eat there. Don't, yeah, it's don't not going to be good it. food. Don't, yeah. house. If it's, it it's uh, 71, it's perfect. Go. <laughs> right, so. right. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the only way you won't get sick from eating there is if you have a gas station hot dog or a hockey game. Oh, <laughs> yes. You, we're going to be talking about that all, all episode now. You I know can meet right? a Golden Corral if you want to. I'd be up for that. Uh, dude, <laughs> I have not eaten at a Golden Corral since we lived at the Deuce, and I just I feel like <laughs> probably not a good idea. When we lived there, too, they used to have a Kenny Rogers Roasters across the street from our yes! house. Dude, and they did this thing where, where every Tuesday it was like like basically all you can eat chicken night. Yes. Oh, and so you, yeah. you go, and at the time, you pay six ninety five, you get chicken as much as you That's wanted and like crazy. like sides. And I'm I'm a dark meat guy. I don't like white meat. So yeah. I would like they don't. Uh. The other guys would always have to wait for the chicken because I'd have to cook so much chicken. Yeah, yeah. I would just go back for, over and over and over. And they, I, I we might have put them out of business because <laughs> we definitely <laughs> yeah. we definitely put Tony Romo's out of business That's very in the true. area because we went and me and this guy Chris we mm-hmm. call him Wookie, tall guy, really Six tall guy. Nine. Yep. Big, big guy. One of my best friends. Yep. We did the all you can eat ribs, and I, we shut that. T- it you did the rib a off. week later. They both ate 50 <laughs> ribs each. I kept tallies. 50 ribs I, each. I, I still <laughs> have the napkin with the tally on it. 50 ribs. They're like an entire Dang. case of ribs between two people to the point where the chef or the cook, I, I'm going to say chef, the cook actually came out. It was like looking at you guys and, you know, basically almost like congratulations in awe and also get out of my restaurant. And also, yeah, like, exactly. you, you got to go. You yeah, got to go. Yeah. Steven, does the word Wookiee mean anything to you since you have not seen any Star Wars? Just throw me under the bus. Why don't you? I, 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 I pulled the bus forward and no. I reversed it over you like you're yeah. a speed. All I know is it's a it's a dog thing, right? <laughs> Something like that, sure. Well, we call it's him a mog, he's, half he's man, talking. half dog. That's space. Balls. I'm my own best friend. <laughs> <laughs> we call him Wookiee. If you saw the other side, I've seen line, space you know. balls. But I have never seen Star Trek Baseball. or Star Wars. Yeah, it was the planet. Uh, like, that was this awesome. room that I'm right. sitting in is a Star Wars room. Like you can't see it. I mm-hmm. keep people from looking it's like at a it. Mecca. But it is a mecca. <laughs> like all around me, I'm looking at Star Wars stuff. <laughs> I'm yeah, a little obsessed. And I haven't been to that obsessed. studio in forever because Michael won't open the doors. I don't know. No, I don't let people in my house anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I would just be kicked out really quick after <laughs> oh, you dude. finding out that information. No, so, dude, so get out of my house. We're going to start a Patreon. This is a where safe people, place. <laughs> where, uh, people are going to pay for Steven to eat all sort of different kind of pickles, and I'm going to make him watch Star Wars. Yes! Yes! <laughs> I'm going to make him watch Star Wars. Snack. Snack. <laughs> He would pick up a Greedo and he'd be like, is this a Jedi? I don't know what this is. <laughs> Get, out of my house. Get out of my house right now. No. Now, now, if you had said, like, I'm a Star Trek guy over Star Wars, then right. maybe we'd have a problem. But if you haven't seen either, then I'm fine. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> I feel like we've already talked about two Mel Brooks movies because we talked about, Spaceballs. we just talked about Spaceballs. We Pizza talked the Hut. About- 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what other good food movie Mel Brooks put out was Young Frankenstein. Oh, yes. It's been a long time since I've seen that movie. It's been uh, a long time. I own it, but it's been a many, many years. Who doesn't like a soup dumped in their crotch? <laughs> yeah, yes. Just saying. Yes. <laughs> Monty Python always did food scenes good too, mm. like in a gross out way. Like there was yeah. the, um, it was called, and now for something completely different, mm-hmm. uh, was the name of the movie. And it was really just a bunch of vignettes put together. But the one scene where the guy's just eating and eating and eating, and he's like expanding as yeah. he's eating, and he just yeah. pukes it all over the place. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Which makes me think of Lardass and Stand By Me, of course. Uh, oh, yeah. Blueberry Pie. Blueberry Pie. Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> yes. Stand By that Me, man. a pretty good one. Well, I mean, it would. It actually might be challenging to find a movie that doesn't have a food scene of some type in it. Hmm. That's a yeah, challenge. I, mean, I, I kind of like, want to... Go ahead, Steve. I was going to say, I kind of want to circle back to uh, Tarantino when he... In uh, Pulp Fiction, with that really good milkshake, oh, the five dollar milkshake, milkshake, which yeah. at the time was like, wow, five dollars for a milkshake, and now you're like, I would love to find and pay a only five dollars for a milkshake. milkshake. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean that would be amazing. Yeah. And so, yeah. Like, does it have real ice cream in it? Is mm-hmm. that the deal? Like, well, he drinks it. He's like, mm, that is a tasty shake. I don't know if it's worth five dollars, but it's good. Oh yeah, and then the hamburger. <laughs> the... Mm, that is a tasty burger. That is a ta- the big Kahuna burger. That's a. Tarantino loves his yeah. food stuff, man. Yep. So he just has all that. Well, of stuff it in. makes me think of it's not Tarantino, but kind of like one of my honorable mentions tonight was going to be watching Kurt Russell eat those nachos grande in Death Proof. Like yes. just, <laughs> he's just going after it, and that's yeah. how I eat nachos. Like go after it. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I it's, I like how every crazy. one of his movies that food is mentioned. Like they always have like a big. Uh, a zoom in close up right. of like mm-hmm. food being sliced or being eaten, whatever mm-hmm. the case is. Mm-hmm. I've tried to put that in my food channel and my content and all that stuff, but I always forget because I'm just like, yeah, food whatever. pictures yeah. are hard to take. And, and I say that like seriously because when I'm at Disney, I want to take pictures for my Instagram or whatever, like what restaurants I'm in, and like they're hard to get a good read on because mm-hmm. sometimes you take a picture of a dessert or whatever, it looks tasty. Other times, like a steak, you're like, this looks terrible this looks like a piece of brown meat yeah, this it has no brown. yeah exactly yeah. like i sent melissa some pictures from the sushi place and they just they look normal um nothing looks delicious on there and and so you're trying to get the right lighting and you're using filters but you don't want to take away from actual the actual meal itself and it's it's well it's, that's it's, the it's problem thing. with the they're, advent they're of like, yeah yeah, yeah. and that's really the good. problem of the advent of social media is yeah. everybody thinks they're a food photographer right and <laughs> well, I know that I'm not. they're not not everybody how like, good the steak is <laughs> i've taken and plenty of thinks, pictures and it's not yeah. great everybody yeah. thinks they're a critic too yeah well yeah, and it's like well i mean just because like i don't know it cost this amount and you didn't like it doesn't mean it's not good you know? well that's like, yelp's fault yelp is i i <laughs> don't even get me started mm, on you i taste the notes of this that and the other or mm, the compote here is just i'm like right. steak's pretty good it's transcendent good. yeah it's, it's yeah, steak's good exactly. oh these mashed potatoes are really good i mean in all fairness me people ask me the same thing steven what's your opinion no it's good what yeah. do you mean it's good you, you don't taste this and this i'm like no it's good yeah i'd eat it again you know like but yeah that's how I describe now, food. It's Stephen, good. I haven't. I, I like. I know Melissa has seen this. Has seen this movie, and we we haven't talked about it in years because I haven't seen it since it came out. But have you seen the menu? Did you ever watch that film when it came out? <laughs> We're oh, gonna go movie. down a a, a <laughs> hole that I don't want to go down. I hated that movie. Oh <laughs> really? <laughs> Interesting. Oh, oh, it was like my number yeah. four film of the year. I it love was, that movie, I but I'm also day. not looking at it from a critics uh, food critic eye. Like I'm looking at yeah. it story wise. So when he's talking about what's coming up, whatever, like I can't read into that going, mm-hmm. that sounds stupid. I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. <laughs> oh, I need to know like what what's the deal with it? Like, why don't you like it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, so they're talking about everything, and most people are, you know, intrigued by it. Oh my gosh, they're this and this, and I'm just thinking to myself, I'm bored. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the food's yeah. cool. Yeah, I badass. I'm bored. Go on to the next thing. <laughs> Oh, I was inspired by blah blah blah. I don't know. I just, I just wasn't interested in it for some reason. Yeah. I, I don't know why. Yeah. 
Well, and I think that was the the to me the beauty of the Andy Joy Anya Joy Taylor character is she's the basically like the everyday person like we're living this movie through her. She's looking at us going, I don't know what any of this crap means. It doesn't taste good, and you're yelling at me because you because I you know I should like this movie this this yeah. food and I don't. <laughs> and that's that's really wh why I liked her character so much is because she's us like looking at this going what are you talking about you pretentious douchebag this is well and i do and it does make me wonder like if there are like real people like that nicholas holt character that go into the, like the fancy restaurants mm -hmm. and they feel like they maybe have never been a chef in their life but they feel right. like they can talk about food and in, in yeah, a, a way like he yeah. does yeah yep yeah. yeah, I can I can identify with both. There was a time in my life where I was like super pretentious, like his character. Mm -hmm. And then there's more like I've been doing this for 20 years and I go to the same bar three, four nights a week because the food yeah. and the service are impeccable, mm -hmm. but they are not haute cuisine. Right. By well, it's, it's, yeah. it's those kind but of characters. Scratch. Those yeah. kinds of people that when they talk, they sound good until they're talking to somebody who actually knows the subject. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to and somebody who like, doesn't know the subject, yeah. you're like, oh, you sound like yeah. you know everything about this. And then when you talk to an actual expert, they're like, you're full, yeah. you're full of crap. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> None yeah. of what you're saying is any good. So, kind of like Melissa yeah. just said, we, we, we've been doing this for 20 years, and I always say, I don't know shit about food. Like, I'm a sponge. <laughs> I'm still learning. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sense. Yeah. I will never know everything there is to know about food. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people like fancier stuff than i do and it's like oh yeah that's cool yeah, whatever it's like you you learn and grow or you die like right. you evolve mm. or you die and, and and it's never you should be a lifelong student like you, there's never a day goes by in my career that i don't learn something it's not mm. always about food it might be about like how to present myself or you know how to um help somebody be a better like version of themselves right but like I'm constantly learning and you need to be teachable and you need to be moldable and like with food i'm just like Man, at this point, it's just sustenance, and uh, if it feeds me, it's great, you know. <laughs> like, right. You know. Right. Well, and yeah. it's just it is like movies. It's where you know there are certain ones, certain things you know should be good. You know, certain things should be steak, but sometimes you just you just want to eat a Waffle House. Sometimes you want to pop in a Kevin James movie and enjoy. Here comes the boom because you don't want to think about anything. You just enjoy it, you know. <laughs> like um, but then again, there are some steaks out there that I should love, and I'm like, this is not good. Some movies out there that you should love, and I'm like watching it, going, I don't like this movie. This movie is I, yeah, exactly. I was so, gonna say, I'm, I'm very resourceful, like in Goodfellas. Like I'll use a razor blade to chop my yes. garlic to keep right. it thin. Not that I actually do that, but like that's, that's a great I'm scene, a rice ball guy, you know. Right, <laughs> that is a great scene. And, and then you put a lot of love into it, and it tastes really good, you know. Well, that's how Michael eats his mashed potatoes, like Scarface. He just puts it on the menu and just straight up and just you know, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> swallows right. some hot water and let it just just eat the stomach. It's, it's weird, but hey, that's he his shakes thing, his head man. to mix it all up. Yeah, huh? I'm not mainline the that. mainline that stuff. <laughs> I'm not gonna judge him for that. <laughs> so. Oh, he shows up on the podcast, a little like a mashed potato powder on his nose. I'm ready to go, guys. Let's go. Just the instant powder. Drugs, no, it's just powdered mashed, mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I full on tried that joke at a Rangers game once. I got a funnel cake full of powdered sugar and I like, oh, yeah. kind of like nose first it. And I took a bunch of selfies and, and nobody thought it was as funny as I was, but I didn't care. I didn't stop. My I, was like, friend. I was like, this is amazing. I don't have a problem. I can stop anytime I want. And the humor was lost on everybody. But I had I had yeah. powdered sugar all over my nostrils. It was Swing great. Miss, but it's Swing okay. Swing miss. Hey, as long as I laugh at the joke, then mm. it's fine. It was That's right. Enough, right. That's true. Um. So on a bit more serious, not super serious mm. note, but oh, yes. My next mention I have to go to is a little movie from 1988 called Mystic Pizza. Uh, mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mystic Mystic Pizza mm. was Matt Damon's film debut. Mm -hmm. And it was two years before Julia Roberts made her big break in um, Pretty Woman. And then it also has Annabeth Gish, who I'm super fond of. And um, one of the things that really stands out, like we talked about how sometimes food is the main character, but sometimes food is just like a plot device. And that's how right. I feel it is in this movie. But like, it's a little bit more than a plot device. It really draws all the characters together. Um and it put this place on the map. Like the film made this little spot in Connecticut famous. Um, mm -hmm. So kind of one of the, their claims to fame is that they, they'll put a thin layer of cheese on top of all the toppings and cook it until it's caramelized. So they Ooh. say, if you don't like your pizzas crispy and caramelized, like don't go there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I, I want to visit it someday. And I love that movie. I adore that movie. All I heard a long time I've seen Matt it. Damon. Very long time. <laughs> Matt Damon. 
Scotty game. doesn't Scotty doesn't know. Different movie, but great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love that movie and I, I have this deep desire. I like I wanna it's like one of those bucket list things where like I want to go to Mystic Pizza. <laughs> but, yeah. Does it still exist? Um yes, it sure. still exists. And I think there are different owners. Well, um, okay, makes sense. But yeah, the family that owned it initially that inspired it was like a screenwriter took a vacation there and made this fictional story about three waitresses who were all like connected by the restaurant. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, that original restaurant, they changed owners, but they, the other family, like they still have all the pictures from the filming and they still mm-hmm. have, I think the actual filming took place a couple doors down. Um, so in, in a different kind of like brick, facade but like a, another family owned business that was a little bit similar but yeah all the exteriors were shot there for sure bless you it's also where the um where the 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 brilliant comedy mystic river was filmed uh also in that really? area too so yeah hmm. and by That's, brilliant comedy i mean that was not a comedy at all. i was like it was a horrific movie. A funny? what it's funny about that <laughs> it's a great movie but man is that movie depressing <laughs> and hard it's such a downer but it's a really good movie yeah, mystic connecticut it is. Um, it is. <laughs> so yeah 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 i got a shout out just because of the local alabama Mm -hmm. connection fried green tomatoes Uh, um the whistle stop cafe is here in irondale alabama Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) and that's kind of you know what inspired that movie um it's uh your typical meet and three type situation which is a a very big thing in in the south and um I, i love it i've been there several times and it's Nothing fancy, but it's good food. You know, it's hmm. such a good movie too, though. Mm-hmm. It holds a similar place in my heart that still Magnolias does. It's like yeah. if yeah. I'm if I'm you know have my in- digital antenna hooked up and I'm scrolling around stuff. Like if it's on, I'm stopping to watch it. That's right. It's it's a classic. It's a classic. I love that movie, and I love <laughs> fried green tomatoes. Oh my gosh, mm. they're good. Yeah. Yeah, it makes me want to go to a farmer's market like tomorrow morning. <laughs> yes, uh, exactly. <laughs> well, and I will, I will shout out a movie that I like. I, I have forgotten three times in a row to mention in, in Reflections, uh, Steve. But we do an episode once a month where we talk about all the movies we've seen that month. And sometimes it's mm-hmm. a two and a half hour episode because I come into it with fifteen movies. Mikey is twenty five. <laughs> it's it's mm-hmm. insane, right? We just go one after the other. Uh, but the movie is called called Waitress. Uh, Carrie Russell, two thousand seven, oh, yeah. and yeah. it's set in this down home country little 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 cafeteria where she is a pie maker and she makes these these pies that people come from all over the place and she calls them different things based on what's going on in her life she has like my i hate my husband pie which is a bittersweet chocolate pudding uh <laughs> feeling that's drowning in caramel and a pregnant miserable self-pitying loser pie which is a lumpy oatmeal and fruit cake and, and like all through the movie there's different pies and, stuff. and it's a great that's little film it's a lot of fun they made it into a musical starring sarah Brellis, who i love oh uh, she's a good singer and so it's a i really great want musical. It, it came to the theater not too long ago and i really wish i could could have seen it Oh, that's right. Um, they did like a theatrical they release did, of they the did. musical. And I'm hoping it'll yeah. be available somewhere streaming. But uh, but yeah, Waitress is a fun movie. It really is. Um, you know, Carrie so Russell's bad, yeah. kind of one of her last stands before she faded into obscurity and bit parts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was. To, I think it was really like a, a, a more of an awakening of her career. Because all she'd done was like a bunch of lifetime before that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is true. But Well, Felicity. She'd done Felicity. It's sure, um, sure, sure. And so then she Thanks. did movies and stuff. She was in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and all that good stuff and yep. showed yeah. up in Rise of Skywalker, which I would erase that from my resume immediately. But um, yeah. <laughs> How dare you? No, it's not a great movie. Oh, you agree. You know I know. It's not a great movie. Yeah. Yeah. Why I haven't seen any of those movies? Because I wouldn't even know where to start. I wouldn't know which ones Well, if you ever seeing... seriously want to start, let us know. We'll be happy to direct you in the ways of the, the Star Wars well, watching. Just original um, trilogy. That's all you yeah. need to do. You know, just watch the those original. three and you're fine. Also I would say watch original. the first one. If you don't like the first one, don't go to the rest of them. I mean, there's no sense in trying to the rest like of them. Like number four, you mean? Yeah, number four. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. like, yeah. okay. The one from 77, yeah. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Start in yeah. chronological Fair. order by year. That was yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty much. Just do that. Like best, I said, but if you're halfway through the first one and you're like, this is this is terrible. Like, and man. honestly, you have to go into it with the mentality of this was filmed based on like the the – the cliffhanger movies of the thirties and forties in the theaters it's filmed in the seventies. It still has that seventies kind of feel to it. You know, it's yeah. a feel good film. Some of it doesn't hold up to today. You're like, that's kind of hokey and it's intentionally hokey. Um, it's okay. But halfway through it, if you're like, this is not for me, then don't just don't waste your time. 
um, because yeah. either you like it or you don't. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not one I would tell you to keep giving it a chance. Keep watching it over and over. Don't do that. You'll be one of the Star Wars hating people. And nobody Dude, likes people. <laughs> I hate when people tell me to watch a TV show and they go like, you got to wait one season for it to get good. I'm like, I'm out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm out. If it doesn't capture me like in two episodes, I'll give <laughs> right. it two episodes. But it right. better <laughs> capture me. In two yeah. episodes, or I'm done. Well, I mean, 24 and a half seasons of Law and Order SVU, I'm still waiting for it to really catch me, but I'm hoping. <laughs> right. I'm hoping by season 25. That yeah. show is a masterpiece. You I've seen every episode. Every <laughs> episode. I got to shout out through it. that the only thing that's good in the Harley Quinn movie is that breakfast sandwich that Margot Robbie's eating in that movie. Hmm. It yeah. looks like the most yeah. amazing <laughs> breakfast sandwich that I have ever seen. Like, and the qualifier there is it needs to get all over you as you're eating it. It's mm -hmm. not a good breakfast sandwich unless that egg is like running down your face yeah. as you're eating it. it like oh, grease man. down your arm. We can love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, a question though for the for the chefs in the room. Have you guys ever been sitting at a table with all of your friends and suddenly somebody starts singing Dion Warwick, like in my best fr uh, my best friend's wedding? <laughs> you know, somebody at the end of the table goes, That doesn't happen to me yet. I wake up. And putting on my makeup, and then somebody else goes, Stay a little Stay a little and everybody kind of gets into it. With, it's, you haven't lived really, and I haven't lived because it never happened, but uh, it should. I would <laughs> simply just get up and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, well, within two lines, if it's going to work or not, because if nobody responds to you, then you're like, You know what? It's, it's probably not working today. <laughs> Golly. I don't think it's any, me. I don't think any food has ever moved me to sing, and I, I like to sing mm. and I mm. love to eat. Um, but I don't think any food has ever moved me to sing. Not to sing. Yeah, <laughs> no, not, not to sing, yeah. Now, I do this little dance when I eat something that I really like. It's kind mm -hmm. of like this. It's a silent. And I'm just oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the, the restaurant that I frequent, the bar that I go to, they they call that my happy dance. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. You I just see me smile. That's all you see. It's really just like yeah. undiagnosed ADHD, I think. But um. what's what's interesting <laughs> is when you eat too many hockey hot dogs, you also do little dances. You're trying to get into the house and you're fumbling bathroom. with your keys and trying to get into yeah, you're like dancing and moving. And you're like, oh, you know. So, yeah. It's an all together. That's what you want to be doing, and though. That's yeah. called bringing it back around again, folks. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's a full circle moment right there. <laughs> I was also yeah, speaking of full circle. I was going to say Tomato Press is my other OnlyFans name. If you want to look that up, <laughs> Tomato Press. Yeah. <laughs> you invited us on here, Melissa. I mean, is this when I tell you to avoid the tomato sauce? I don't look, know. Where do I go these, from here? I, these I pearls that I clutch—they're they're imaginary. Like I, I, I can dish it out as as good as I can take it, so it's no big deal. Steve, what you got? Nothing. What you got? <laughs> no, I'm yeah, okay, one more movie for me that always just stood out to me as far as food was um was it the Christmas story? No, Especially like, with, like yeah, with the turkey at the very end when they go to the Chinese restaurant, it's like Peking duck and all oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I always remember that. It's really unfortunate that movie's so horrible. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> That's what you found. You no, found no the movie. Touches. You found Stephen. That is the movie that I hate. That everyone loves. You found. I didn't it. say I love it. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, well, we have. My wife loves it. So every Christmas we watch it. And, I'm in the know. same boat. My wife loves it too. And so I'm forced to watch that piece of crap every Christmas. When the turkey <laughs> collapses off the table and the dogs come after it. And then the narrator, yeah. uh, Gene Shepard, then goes on and on this whole thing. No turkey a la kish, no, no turkey, turkey sandwich, or whatever. No I'm now wondering if there's more mentions of a turkey usage oh. versus the, how many shrimp usages that Bubba mentions in Forrest Gump. Oh, gosh. I think like, I'm curious <laughs> how many <laughs> options I for turkey think versus shrimp. Is more. shrimp. That's where Forrest Gump got the idea from. I, no, I don't, that, I don't know. Is that the <laughs> only movie that has spawned a restaurant chain? Like, because huh. there's, because I, I, I can't think of any. Is there well, a good burger anywhere in this country? I have no there's idea. There's not now. Caddyshack, which <laughs> was not a food movie, mm -hmm. did for a while have a, a few restaurants. I don't know if they're still around. They were just called. Uh, there was uh, in South Carolina. They had huh. them, like wherever there was golfing towns or whatever. Yeah, uh, I mean, but I, there have been a number know. of pop ups inspired by like movies mm. and okay. TV. TV shows, okay. yeah. But yeah. you know, so like a couple weeks back, we did a TV restaurants we wish were real. 
Oh, like the Max and whatnot. That's right. Um, that's right. But I or think I don't know. You know, that might be it. I like I four Bubba, Gums Bubba Gums like... shrimp. That might be like it's still going strong. I think so. Yeah. 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 I don't think that's there's amazing. another one that I can think of off the top of my head. You're right. You're right. That's mm -hmm. crazy. That's wild. Because that really wasn't like a food movie per White, se, but like they White had, Castle doesn't count because it was already a thing. It was already an, right. yeah, it was right. already an, yeah. which I do. Well, I mean, there's a Pizza it's Planet. A I want to say in Disney World, Disneyland, mm -hmm. so, I don't yeah. know, but, but not kind of like a chain. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a branding thing. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah. Well, dude, another question like though, and this is yeah. random movies. Like, are there movies that you guys like that are set in restaurants that have nothing to do with the food? Like the movie is whatever, critical scenes are in the restaurant or whatever, but like the food is just secondary. Uh, and I'm thinking about the movie Compliance, which I saw not too long ago. Mm. Um, and it's set in the back room. This this whole serious bit between it's the manager and one of the one of the workers there. Nothing to do with the food. It's just all set in the restaurant itself. Yeah. Um, Dave, great movie. I always meant to ask you if you mm. ever made the connection between that movie and the Robin Williams guest spot on SVU. That's what it's based on. Is that news headline? Do you remember that? <laughs> I oh, now that you've said it, I remember the I vaguely remember the episode. Uh, you got to yeah. remember there are five hundred and something episodes sure. I've seen in this show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not Robin even joking. Williams. Uh, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but no, that, I know. I knew it was a real thing. I knew it actually existed. Like, uh, and for those who don't know, what we're talking about and Stephen. Yeah. Basically, the whole premise is this: this random guy calls this restaurant and pretends to be from corporate, or mm -hmm. and like they're pulling this girl in the back and they're talking about like how she's accused of a customer's called me accusing of stealing whatever. Now we have to basically like strip search her and doing all these horrible things on the phone. And the manager's an idiot. He's like, "Okay, okay. we'll do that." Yeah. And this really happened. The, this really happened to several restaurants. Mm -hmm. Um, like strip searching this girl and looking for the stolen money and whatever. It just it's yeah. it's an insane story. It's um, crazy. But there is that. And the other thing I was thinking is how many times in the restaurant have you had some random guy come running through the restaurant to escape the bad guy? And he's mm. knocking over the shelves. He's knocking over <laughs> the carts and stuff to try to stop the guy with a gun from getting him, you know, and whatever. I mean, it's or like in Ghostbusters where you're running from like Gozer or whatever through a rest through a fancy restaurant <laughs> or true, true. banging I mean, on the door trying to get in. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, I guess like it that. depends on if busting does make you feel good. That's that's mm, that's that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Movies that take place in a restaurant that have nothing to do with the restaurant. I can mm -hmm. think of all the family scenes in my big fat Greek wedding. Oh, there you go. All these discussions yeah. they have in the cafe and Love never everybody. once are they like talking about the, right. You know, I made this yeah. mestizo or Baba Ganoush mm -hmm. or whatever, like this is nothing, no mention except for, Oh, you're a vegetarian. You don't eat the meat. I make you lamb. You know? <laughs> you don't eat the meat. I make lamb. I, make lamb. <laughs> I can only think of the movie waiting. That's it. But even then mm -hmm. they, Still discuss food. Yeah, they definitely yeah. Uh, enhanced that steak for that for that uh, nice yeah. lady. And so, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, have to, like, I have to go get my power cord, so I'm going to disappear for like 45 seconds. Okay. Dude. Every um every mobster movie that there's always a shooting in an Italian restaurant. Yes. So it's yeah. really yeah. nothing to do with the food, but there's always like a murder that because, happens. <laughs> because every mob needs a front, and a front is always yeah. a cafe. Yeah, exactly. Hundred like, mm -hmm. yeah. percent. It's yeah, always exactly. a cafe. Going back yeah. to like all those movies where they go through the restaurant kitchens and yes. the bad guys. Are, I always think, why don't they just shoot the guy? Like, mm -hmm. like there, or why doesn't the good guy just get a pot of boiling water and throw it on the bad guy? Like, mm -hmm. you never see stuff like that. Yeah, you never see them get like the chef's knife and use it against the bad guy. Like, it's just a chasing scene, and it's kind of lame. You know, it always. You do. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, speaking of, you do got, you have to shout out uh, Steven Seagal's character in Under Siege was a chef. Yep. And he was a badass with a knife. So you got to yeah. shout that out. I mean, yeah. The only thing well, about Steven Seagal cool. movies is he always looks like he's looking into the sun, you know, like. Yeah, huh. he does. <laughs> he always is <laughs> squinting. Yeah, yeah exactly. Emma Stone? What? No, no, no <laughs> Steven true, Seagal. True, Steven Seagal. <laughs> Steven Seagal movies. He always looks like he's looking into the sun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I always, when somebody's like, he's not being chased, but I always think when somebody's like running through a kitchen and seemingly mm -hmm. like gets away with it, I always think of that scene in Mrs. Doubtfire where they're at Bridges. And he puts <laughs> he puts on the uh, the chef code, and he's right. like he's spiking the food because the, the other guy's allergic to pepper. Um, and I've got a guy that I work with, very very high up senior leadership, 
And one time we were in this VIP event to open um, a restaurant recently, uh, last November. And this guy was carrying an urn full of hot coffee and he goes, hot jambalaya. And I turned around and I was like, oh my God, Mrs. Doubtfire. And he was like, yes, nobody ever gets that reference. Like we had a moment. It was it was That's amazing. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Nobody ever forget the, the, the time. He, he sets his falsies on fire. He's trying to make dinner for the family. Yeah. Like, There's lots of food. Because stuff my, my second Alpha. day as a woman and I'm yeah. already having hot flashes is like a great scene. I love the really scene fun. in Mrs. Delphire where he where he takes the cake and puts it on his face <laughs> to make it look like you know <laughs> he's, he's uh, into the, uh, into the, the social workers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah exactly. Great. And this, then of course they use yeah. uh, food as a weapon in that one because the fly by fruity. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fly by fruity. Yeah, it was a fly by fruity. I saw him, yeah. the scoundrel. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> scene. It's so good. <laughs> that Man. was the magic of Robin Williams. Dude. Oh, oh yes. dude, I oh, miss yes. him so much. He was so yeah. awesome. He's one of the few guys we did. We've actually done themed an entire episode around, and all the movie episodes we've done in the podcast, like we themed, we did a whole episode around him when he passed away. Um, mm -hmm. I think him, Bruce Willis, and. Other than like a specific tournament style episode or something where we yeah. just said, hey, we're talking about this one guy. Yeah, um, That does yeah. sadly remind me of John Candy in The Great Outdoors, the old oh, 96. The yes. Oh, that's yes. take. <laughs> I would try that. I would try. Like, oh, dude, I, don't, I would I don't throw that, down on that. I don't know that any actor has ever acted out a meat sweat so well. <laughs> <laughs> because it was real. When John Candy <laughs> made those giant pancakes in Uncle Buck, that yes. is the one yeah. that I would be yes. up for trying to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That was a great. Well, scene. And the pancakes for breakfast always makes me think of Pleasantville, which is when she makes all the pancakes yeah. and all the biscuits and everything on the table, <laughs> and he comes and takes one bite and he leaves because that's what happened at every sitcom in the fifties. Yeah. All right. this food and take one bite, and of course she becomes well, aware of it. Gotta go. But, uh, gotta go. Exactly. <laughs> like all this food's left over. They're trying to feed you more food and such. Um, I always have. To, I have to think about this scene. It's a little bit like I'll have to bring it down just a little bit, but it's the scene uh, in hmm. sign at the end of Signs. Mm. Um, where Mel Gibson is like asking his family, like the son's like, I'll make some sandwiches. And the little boy's like, no, I want spaghetti and meatballs. And or he, he goes like, I want French toast and mashed potatoes. And the little girl goes like, I want spaghetti and meatballs. And the, the uh, older son is like, I want chicken teriyaki. And Mel Gibson's like, I just want a cheeseburger. I like want a cheeseburger with extra cheese, but <laughs> everybody's grieving and it's mm -hmm. so like emotionally fraught and nobody right. can eat. And then Mel Gibson starts yelling at everybody. Like the dad starts yelling. He's like, why isn't anybody eating? He's like, fine, I'll just eat everything. But it's, it's so like emotionally charged. And I right. always think that like, to me, uh, I mean, for all my life, there's been like this certain amount of whimsy about eating foods for a meal time and they, where they didn't belong. Like mm. it's been, it's like fun. Right. Mm -hmm. And I watch this movie and I go like, dude, the whole thing is unraveling and it's uncomfortable to watch, mm -hmm. but it always makes me really hungry because I'm the <laughs> freak that would put all those foods together. In like, one meal, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I, I used to have a great friend that we would go to Denny's together late when I would get off work and we would order pancakes and spaghetti and we would, we would go half on both oh, because we could nice. because we couldn't decide what we wanted so it was like sweet salty italian as as italian as denny's spaghetti can be i was gonna <laughs> say yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well I, mean, I you know i'm one of those people that like it, when i want a food i want a food depending on i don't yes. care what time it yeah. is and yeah i went to, i was at a conference and i it was the, one of the start conferences, launch out conferences, Melissa. You yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yep. And uh, we were at a restaurant. I, don't, it's like I think Tulsa. it was Atlanta. Was it Tulsa? And Atlanta? It was Atlanta, actually. It was in Atlanta. <laughs> and we were at a restaurant for breakfast, like eight in the morning. And, uh, you know, I was, had ordered the eggs. And I looked at the menu and I was like, this burger looks good. The waitress was like, do you want a burger? And I was like, I would love a cheeseburger right now. So on yes. my plate, I had pancakes, uh -huh. a couple of <laughs> eggs, and a cheeseburger. Yes. And it was delicious. Yeah. And everybody yeah. around the table was like, you're eating a cheeseburger for breakfast? I'm like, she offered. I got it. And it's so good right yeah, now. And it was really good. I, I wanted a cheese. I'm sorry. Did I stutter? <laughs> this is what I'm having. Yes. Yeah. You, you <laughs> it. It's not like I'm making you do it. You said you would do it. And you said it mm -hmm. nicely. And I'm so, yes, thank you for offering. I'm all, I'm all in. Let's do it. So good times. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> Wait, I got one more question for y'all. Okay, so yeah. speaking okay. of food movies, what was your take on Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs? I've never seen it. I love um, it. 
I've got I kids, so I've seen it a lot. I mean, yeah, I, yeah I've I seen like that it. movie a lot. I, I feel like I'm those. striking out with Steven because you cut, like I've seen 4,100 <laughs> movies in my life, basically, at this point. And it, you called it two movies, and I'm like, I He's finding that. movies you haven't seen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it I is, love yeah. Both, I love both of those. There's two of them, right? Yeah. Yeah, I I, I yeah. yeah there's two of them. Mm-hmm. My I, favorite is there's a leak in the there's boat. There's a leak in the boat. <laughs> yeah, I freaking love that scene. And it's a leak. Is there? Yeah, it's a great. leak. It's so great. Dude. Yeah, that's I mean, good one. Steve, you know, I'm me and food puns. It's like mm. any anything. Mm. Get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm there. <laughs> oh, I love that movie. Now, a movie that I didn't care for where all the food came to life was Sausage Fest. I hate it. Uh, now I have not seen movie. that. I have not oh. seen that. One. Yeah. Wait, sausage yeah. fish or sausage party? Sausage party. Sausage sausage party. Yeah. Oh, I hate yeah. it. Which yeah. was, which was, that movie. interestingly enough, a sausage fest. Yeah, it was. Yes, uh, it was it vulgar. Was. <laughs> it was profane. It had no reason to be that dirty. It was just disgusting. Yeah, and I hated it. The, the first fifteen oh. minutes, you're like, oh, that's funny. I see what they yeah. did there. And the last, you know, fifty minutes, you're like, I don't want to be here. I, I don't want to see yeah. hot dogs and, and bagels having orgasms. I don't. There's nothing about this. There's nothing about this that works for me at all. Now, um, if it was a hockey hot dog, though, well, that's a different story. <laughs> that's the French only I mean, fans channel only. Yes, pump. yes, they're they're getting pucked up. So uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to like that movie, and I just couldn't like it either. So yeah. I saw it at the dollar movie and almost left. I was like, I this was a dollar. Like, yeah, it was streaming for me. It was just man, I do miss the dollar theaters. There's not, there's nothing <laughs> left <laughs> anywhere that I can. I mean, there's not any in stupid COVID. We, we have a local. <laughs> we had a local dollar um, theater that did fifty cents on Thursday nights. Oh, uh, nice. And I'll never forget when I was in high school, I saw tw- uh, Lord of the Rings two like nine times, mm-hmm. l- legit. And I would make food pun jokes while the orcs were running around. So I'd be like, Oreo. Oh, I'm really like marching through the woods. I mean, we're like three people in there, right? And so this one person is looking back and going like, shh. And I'm like, yeah, lady, I paid the 50 cents like you did. Like, stop, you know? I mean, like, I, I hate the fact that COVID robbed us of 24-hour Walmarts and yeah. 50 cent movie theaters like yeah. it's true it, it, and like for a while the only neo Dallas movies i'd ever seen i saw at a dollar movie theater i saw a big fat greek wedding one i saw a big fat greek wedding two <laughs> and my life ruins all of the my dollar movie ruins. theater yeah and then when i saw three it was terrible and i'm like well i just need the dollar theater to open again so i can enjoy neo yeah. Dallas's career it's just <laughs> <theater> <laughs> <movie>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's this there's this ongoing joke that richard marks um the singer makes he's like if you want to enjoy my entire catalog make sure you go to the dentist regularly yes. <laughs> <laughs> right yes yes him and michael bolton always yeah. at the dentist i like i, I celebrate bolton. his entire catalog <laughs> <laughs> Nice, y'all. Michael Bolton had a brain tumor over Christmas, and he's like, I know, know. it's well. I mean, it's he's healing because really all he needed was some time, love, and tenderness. Um, I knew it was, Uh, I knew it. It's, oh, I <laughs> oh god i love that his name was featured in office space yeah are you related to the singer no no why should i change my name just because that no talent ass clown started releasing albums when i was in the third grade yeah <laughs> why should you change my name he's the one who sucks <laughs> he's the one who yeah. sucks <laughs> office space of course has a food food stuff in it it does yeah, the, the uh tchotchkes or whatever yep, mm-hmm. yep. or what is it's that it's TGI fridays basically yeah, yeah, yeah. it's basically yeah. tgi fridays yeah. <laughs> and the flare the flare yeah, yes the flare. 37 pieces of flare yeah what was it, it the extreme fajitas yeah or whatever the, the poppers how about that you look you yeah. have a case of the mondays dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like somebody has a case of the mondays <laughs> oh man uh, <laughs> Awesome. Movies and food, man. It's the best. Yeah. The, the, I mean, a perfect combination. It, I mean, it's interesting. I, you know, I watch movies and I mean, for a bunch of different reasons, right? Like I watch stupid movies because I want to mm-hmm. turn my brain off. Mm-hmm. I'll watch something really moving. Like I recently watched um, The Zookeeper's Wife. It's like a true story about how yeah. they were like hiding Jews from the Nazis. Right, and right. It was a cry fest. It was a rough movie. And I don't think I was like really ready for, for what I was watching. But sometimes... I'm just watching something random and because I am who I am, all I'm doing is paying attention to the food scenes. I'm like, Oh, that looks good. Mm. 
That was that was good. True. Oh, they did that wrong. Oh, they would never do that. I think my biggest beef and something that I notice a lot on sitcoms is like the empty coffee cup. Or where they mm-hmm. come back from like fictional Starbucks and they sit it down and it makes like a hollow echo and you're like, dude, who they could have put water in there. Just like put something in the cup. Right? Yeah. Like it's like, you know, like <laughs> I hate that. Yeah. Well, and you know, I'll watch. I, I will. will watch like glasses and how they're full or how empty they are, and how they'll do cutbacks between or switchbacks between like this person and that person. The, the table, And the glasses oh, yeah. will be full, then empty, and all of a sudden full again, halfway. Like no ice, pull ice, whatever. Yeah. It's one of those like such yeah. a small thing. If I was ever going to make a movie, that's uh, the movie might suck, but the water proportions would always be correct. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to cost seventeen million dollars to go back and replace this water. Do it. CGI that thing. Do it. So, I'm not going to be a trivia note in IMDb. Fix it. So, in the goofs section. Like, I'm not going to turn into a TikTok reel. Right? It's not me today. <laughs> Steve, you got any more movies for us? Hmm, any food movies? Yeah, what do you think? my head. But when you were talking about just having to reshoot all of that, it just made me think of The Aviator. When they're mm-hmm. talking in the theater, like, we're going to have to reshoot Hell's Angels. How much of it? All of it, you know. <laughs> that's that's actually one of my favorite movies. So. I love that movie. It's a good movie. Yeah, really good. Good movie. Really good. You should have the the poached pear soup. I hear it's divine. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. Yeah, I like all that. I'm a bit of a Leonardo DiCaprio completist, so I when in the time of Netflix DVDs being mailed to your house, mm-hmm. I knock oh, up a bunch yeah. of people's like entire catalogs through the mail. So yeah. Tom Hanks was one, and Leo was the other. Nice. So. Yeah. yeah, I've seen everything so you were the... since like '99. I mean, it's been you know the early stuff. I have not gone back to yeah. watch, but yeah, you were the yeah. one person that watched the beach then. Yeah, I one? watched the beach. <laughs> yeah, and I watched. Strangely um, enough, I've seen that one. <laughs> like yeah. General General Wilson's War. Charlie Wilson. Charlie, Charlie Wilson. Wilson. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, yep. Tom Hanks. Yeah, and Amy yeah. Adams. So I saw. I've seen that one. Yep. Yep. Oh yeah, Amy yep. Adams and Julia Roberts. Like I think I've I've circled her career pretty close. Like mm-hmm. sometimes not on purpose, but yeah, right. She's in that yeah. one too. And and Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. Great, incredible yeah. actor. <laughs> so good. Yeah. So good. So yeah. What about you, Dave? You got any more iconic food moments in film? You know, I was actually just looking at my list of of favorite films, and it and, and made me also think too of the shawarma scene at the end of Avengers. Um, yeah. You know, which was a scene yeah. like they came back and yeah. redid it at the very like they flew everybody back in, and it's this for the four people who, if there's a Venn diagram of people who have never seen this movie and are listening to this podcast, um, you know, there's a very. <laughs> He mentions when they when they beat the bad My guys mom. and they beat the Shatari and they beat Loki and you know Tony Stark says, Hey, there's a good shawarma place down there down the street. Let's take tomorrow off, whatever. And after the credits are over, it shows the table and they're all sitting around eating shawarma. There's one guy in the back kind of sweeping up. And you know, Steve Rogers, Chris Evans, has his hand over his face because he had grown a beard for the film Snowpiercer. And so they flew him back in to wow. do this one little scene there. And he had to cover it up because they tried to do CGI. It didn't work. And everybody's just kind of sitting around eating shawarma. Nobody says a thing. And it's one of the funniest scenes. Um, I actually, for whatever reason, I went out and bought all the Funko Pops that went with that scene. So I have an entire set of all six Funkos that go together and click together to make that scene. And I'm like, they're still in boxes. I don't know what to do with them. But I have them. It's great. But yeah, I mean, it's Dave, it's does good. that mean that you need like a plastic? Do you need me to 3D print like a plastic chicken shawarma? Is that the deal? <laughs> <laughs> plastic chicken shawarma. Dude, my brother will get right on that. Like, that would be awesome. <laughs> what I need 3D printed, and this has nothing to do with food, is I have several other regular size Funkos, like the protect the plastic protectors. I can't uh-huh. find any for the larger Funko boxes. That's a problem. Mm. I'm like, I got I got 10 of these that I can't find any protected for. You know, first world problems, really, but uh <laughs> it's there. <laughs> There. This is champagne and caviar problems. I mean, there are Funkos <laughs> in Africa right now that would love to be able to have a hard case. So, how will I store my large Funko box? Right, problem he says in between <laughs> bites of caviar. Yeah, once you <laughs> caviar is not good. Although it also makes me think of the scene in Big when he's he's walking oh, around yeah. the buffet and he's trying to eat all this because he's twelve the years old and Tommy's his body. Yeah. and he gets the he gets the caviar and he puts it and he's like. Uh, and spit it out because it's so disgusting. Yeah. I always loved the, the baby corn. He was yes. eating it like. <laughs> 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 or the scene in Back to School with Roddy Dangerfield where he takes the caviar and all the appetizers and he put it all on a piece of bread and just slaps it together. And makes it's a the hors d'oeuvre sandwich yes. in the dinner roll. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so genius. 
Uh, <laughs> good times. Good That's times. A great scene. Nice. Uh, Mikey, what do you got? Uh, I mean, I guess like the last one that I always loved when I was a kid was Honey, I Shrunk the Kids because mm. th- when they would shrink down, there'd be these huge food items in front of them. Yes. And I just loved the idea of that to be just have a huge Oreo cookie in front of you and just right. chow down. Mm. That'd be amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would have been me with an oatmeal cream pie if I, you know, when I was a kid. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love the oatmeal cream. Pies. I feel like I feel like to scale, that's what little Debbie's used to be until we all grew up. Yeah, because right. Oat, <laughs> oatmeal cream pie used to be like this big, and then yeah, we just got yeah, smaller, yeah. smaller, and smaller, and we got bigger. It's shrinkflation at its yeah. finest. Yeah. yeah. Um, now you can just eat a whole sleeve of those things, and it's be like, eh, you know, and it's like a Tuesday. Yeah, <laughs> that happened. Oh, so that's that's a thing I did. One's dinner because they're tiny. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. <laughs> Right. And you go through the entire box and you're like, well, I'm not really hungry for dinner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. This was dinner. Yeah. It was late mm-hmm. lunch. And then I'm going to have um, pancakes and a cheeseburger for dinner. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. A la David yes. Diller. I want, I want a uh, cheeseburger right now. I'm going to go to Waffle House and get a waffle and a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would crush um, like two burger patties with American cheese, bacon, mm. but like the buns as pancakes. But like mm. not regular pancakes. I wanted like studded with maple, like McGriddle. Oh, yeah. yeah, the McGriddle thing. Yep. Yeah. I, I can't decide if if yeah. McGriddle is one of the best things or one of the worst things I've ever eaten in my life. Like I, I can yes. never decide. When I eat it, I'm like, <laughs> this is either disgusting or delicious. And Always it's just yes. you know, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. It's whoever it's, thought of that just needs a Nobel Peace Prize. Right. So, yeah. Or or to be thrown in jail. I don't know which one. Maybe both. No, but. I just need a Nobel Peace Prize. I love that person. Yeah. The girls are just the best. It's, <laughs> uh, they're so good. They're so good yeah. and so bad. It's like yeah. I feel so bad and then so much better. I don't know. It's it's mm. the best of both worlds. Like you can. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Um, I think I have like a, one last movie can round us out. Um, mm-hmm. if 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 nobody really has like a legit like anything else, but um, twelve year old me really thought that the movie Soul Food was uh, incredible uh, okay. from from yeah. nineteen ninety seven. So right. this yeah. was Vanessa Williams McKay Pfeiffer. Mm-hmm. Um, you had like fried chicken, collard greens, sweet potato pie, mac and cheese, um, candy and oh, peach stuff. cobbler, like ham, fried fish, chicken and dumplings, potato salad, all the things, right? Um, and and me as as a vanilla folk, you know, we never had all those foods at one time. And so right. I know this is like kind of yeah. dramatized, but that's a lot of different foods in one meal. And yeah. so the film the film is kind of like this this matriarch. Um, you know, Big Mama, she keeps like these Sunday dinners going, um, you know, and they have all this food and it's what brings the characters together. And mm-hmm. and it's really special. And it kind of like she gets sick in the movie, like spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, it's like 20 mm-hmm. something years old. But, um, you know, she gets sick and, and it, it, the tradition kind of falls apart. But what I really like is um, when I got older and learned how to use Google, um, the woman who made all the food for the movie was actually like a church cook that the there was a guy who was involved in costuming and his mom was friends with this woman her name is freddie um she was billed as a food stylist but in reality she made sunday dinner for the director and he hired her on the spot and so the director wanted the food in the movie to be like the stuff that he grew up eating and because she was actually a cook and they didn't use an actual food stylist they weren't you know, making anything out of foam and they weren't making anything out of short meat. Like it was all real right. food. And so yeah. next to the sound stage, they actually ended up setting up just a little stove, like a kitchenette for her. And she would make three or four times the amount of food that was necessary. Uh, and they would use like huge amounts, like massive amounts of food. And they actually had a problem because like the crew would really eat it because it was better than, food that you would find on another movie set it was better than what they had at craft services and so the story goes that the whole cast started to slowly gain weight and then they had to cut it back <laughs> right? so uh, but i like it because you know even if culturally like if, if you can't relate specifically to the film or like the, the specific family dynamics right like i think everybody can really relate to how it feels to come together for a meal with people mm-hmm. that you love and yeah. that's 
just super special for me. Like, I, I really love the idea that this was a woman who cooked really well in her community. And mm-hmm. now all of her food is like immortalized on film. Right. Right. Like, I don't, that's, that's always stood out to me. I, yeah. I love that movie. Yeah. And then like talking about it makes me want to go watch it. Again. <laughs> Even though <laughs> it has not aged well. Like it's not, like, right. <laughs> it's extremely nineties, but it's fine. I love that movie. <laughs> good so, times. Yeah. I love it. it was super good time. Yeah. I mean, we could talk all that about food movies or food scenes or whatever, because there's so many. I mean, yeah. There's, right. there's you type in food problem, movies yeah. in Google and like 70 movies pop up and you're like, oh, yeah. You know, Easily, yeah. Um, and documentaries are, are tough because half mm-hmm. the documentaries out there are like, this is what you're eating and it's bad for you. But if you can find a good documentary like Hero Dreams of Sushi, yeah. um, there's one on HBO actually called The Automat, which is about a, a string of cafes that used to be in New York City. It's very yeah. charming documentary. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that. And so, you know, I try to steer clear of the ones that like made me feel terrible about eating burgers at Waffle House because I don't want to know. I don't want to know what's in it. It's good. You know, um, it's not me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I think that, um, you know, Eero Dreams of Sushi is a really great example. There's also mm-hmm. a really good sushi scene in Isle of Dogs. The Wes Anderson mm-hmm. film is like, yeah, man, sushi is something else, y'all. <laughs> like, yeah. It really is. It's just art. It's lovely. It's so great. <laughs> it's so and great. Then, it's something that I could overeat. And easily. then there's the whole subgenre of films. Society of the Snow, Alive, Stop. Fresh, Stop. Hannibal, Stop. Hannibal. Yep. Uh, no sort of green. I'm just saying there's a whole Hannibal musical. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's just it's you know. Gosh, <laughs> Hannibal the musical. That's that's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, you make me want to watch it. It's so garbage, but it's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> like you, mm. it's a movie, not a film. It's a right. movie. Yes. Right, right, right. The actual experience. <laughs> yeah, <Great>. exactly. Cinema. <laughs> well, <laughs> Mikey, Dave, why don't you tell mm-hmm. us just a little bit about the Deuce Cast movie show in case anybody who listens to mine, in case there's no overlap there. In case they don't you know. go, Dave. You do this. You're better Fine. at that than mine. Uh, <laughs> we have a podcast called the Deuce Cast movie show. We started in 2011, and in the first 100 episodes were kind of all over the map. It was about everything pop culture, music, movies, blah, blah, blah. Around 100, 10, 105, something like that, we centered in just movies. And we do everything from top fives, top tens. We do, uh, you know, your end lists. We talk about favorite actors, actresses. We talk about old movies, new movies. Uh, like I said, we do reflections. We cover a lot of films. We have probably in our time, you know, 600 episodes. We've talked probably five, six, 7,000 movies have crossed our lips at one time or another. We've had on everybody from Paige Davis, from Trading Spaces to uh, various podcasters across the country, you know, on our show. Um, Melissa has been on the show. And uh, coming up every year, which we started 10 years ago, we have the Ducey Awards coming up. And it is our mm-hmm. award ceremony to give out the best awards for the best films of the year. And it's it's I was talking to, to Roth from Wyoming, who's been on your show, too. And it's kind of become a thing now, like back in the early days. And when they when we first did it, we just kind of like, hey, here's nominations for best picture. Here they are. And yeah. this is the winner. We just kind of go in. And now we have like it's like pageantry. It's like it's like Pomp and nominations. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a whole thing. Nice. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. And, you know, it's it was really started as a way for Mikey and myself and at the time, another guy to kind of be able to hang out because we never saw each other. Um, mm-hmm. And now, honestly, we don't see each other that much anyway in real life. Yeah, that's not true. Uh, but... but it's just a, it's a it's a fun thing we do once a week and it's just one of those things we're so ingrained into it now 620 well we do 621 on monday after the oscars and it's just a, it's right. a lot of fun i mean it's, it's it's a family show there's no language really so and you can listen to it with kids in the car um for the most part there's sometimes you know when mikey gets on his kick about show girls or nine and a half weeks there's some of that but uh, you know, <laughs> dr earl his 50 shades of great just kidding he doesn't i don't want to i don't want to smirk him like that he doesn't but uh no, it's a, it's a fun time. It's a fun show. And we typically will look up and be like, oh, crap, we've been podcasting for two hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then I edit this show and I put all kinds of fluff on the extra fluff on there. So it's it's a thing. But yeah, it's a fun it, show every Wednesday, wherever you find finer podcasts and ours. It, <laughs> it's pretty great. Uh, it's pretty great. It's mm-hmm. been really, really amazing to I think I started listing maybe around three, four hundred or something. But I binged like <laughs> everything from the beginning. And um if you've ever seen a movie, you like the podcast. Like that's right. all you need to know. Like you don't have to be a film buff. You don't have to like everything. I mean, look, I, there's like three Star Wars I've never seen. So right. you know, it doesn't really matter. There's no, um, you know, there's no barrier to entry. Like yeah. if you 
seen a movie, yeah. you're yeah. going to like Just the podcast. In. And it's super fun to listen to. You know, one of my so, favorite things is to, is to hear somebody pop up and say, oh my gosh, I haven't thought about the movie in forever. Because we yeah. come up with a movie that like, <laughs> you know, like the peanut butter solution or my bodyguard or the heavenly kid or something from the eighties that people are like, what? <gasps> I've got, you know, holy crap. I, I love that. I love when we, we <laughs> talk to like that because- we just, I mean, like between Michael and I, we subscribe to basically 744 streaming services. So we yeah, cover everything. Probably. I mean, just, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so we wanted to save money on cable. So we spent $300 a month on streaming. I know it's ridiculous. I mean, it's all such a racket. I can have, I have MGM plus once. I don't even know why, but I have it. So. <laughs> it's yeah, it's, it's all right. coming back around. It really like, is. It'll yeah, be like, really look is. at like, this package we have to offer. <laughs> right. <laughs> Historians say it used to be called, is it Cable? Cable, right? Like it just doesn't. It's it's gonna be so dumb. <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> and yet, all my wife wants to do is make sure she has Hallmark. That's all she cares about is Hallmark. So, yep, it's a thing. They're they're consistent, David. They really are. Yeah. They're consistent. <laughs> they really are consistently <laughs> mad. It's, you know? it's the same. Movie. I only watch Hallmark movies that have Bruce Campbell in them, and there's only been two of those. So <laughs> there you go. I only watch Hallmark movies that have, uh, you know, Candace Cameron Bray in them, and that's 744 of the latest. Lacey Chabert. She's on, she's on GAC. She's on Great American Channel now. So, Great American. Yeah. Lacey Chabert has taken over as the Hallmark queen. <laughs> that's right. That's right. See, any anybody can do anything in show business. Once Meg on Family Guy, now wholesome, um, you know, Hallmark yeah, movies. Right. Yeah, yeah. There you go. that's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, and where can we find you guys? Which I always feel like a cad when I say that because I feel like it's a line I stole from your podcast. But here we oh, go. Oh, <laughs> I mean, every podcast does that. I, mean, I know. Uh, I know. I, I'm at the Michael Nip on the socials, mm -hmm. uh, and that that's about it. But the the Deuce Cord is where we really hang out. I mean, that's yeah. our Discord server that we have for the podcast, right. cool. um, and it's really fun. Steve, I think it's almost time for you to join the Discord. I know. We even know, got yeah. Tate to join. Tate from, uh, yeah. Is Tate, that Poopify? Tate. Is that who that is? That's Tate. Yeah, yeah it's oh. Poopify. Steve, yeah. Tate awesome. is Jacob Roth's, one of his co-hosts so on that Good Day for a Movie. So, yeah. 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 Let's do it. Yeah. And David, where? where can we All right, here we go. Find me on Instagram at the Magic on a Dollar. That's my travel Instagram. You can find me on Facebook at Magic on a Dollar and Disney on a Dollar. Don't forget to join us on Thursday mornings. Myself and my friend Jen have the Main Street Electrical Podcast. We talk about travel, pop culture, and all that fun stuff. And of course, fun's the Deuce Cast every Wednesday. There you go. <laughs> so, you said that a time or two, haven't you? I have. It's like a it's like it. six hundred yeah, and something five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. I mean, it really is. It's it's you know two podcasts and you say the same thing like twice. You know, um, twice a week, every week, forever. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Stephen, plug your things. Plug my things. Oh yeah. So find me on Facebook, Chef Stephen Gonzalez, or find me on. The Instagram, the TikTok, or the Twitters at Chef Stegons, or hey, you want to talk some food? Go to ChefStevenGonzalez.com. Also, pick up a copy of my cookbook while you're there. So, yeah. yeah. Get your grub on. It's a fantastic cookbook. Guys. I just followed yeah. Chef Stegons on Instagram. Yes. Yeah. You can see all the really videos. Really fast at Instagram. All, yeah, all looks the like amazing a, things. Oh, it looks like my buddy Derek Frank is following you too. Very cool. Uh, Dude, that's cool. awesome. Yeah. That guy's awesome. That guy's awesome. He's a he's uh, a good dude. He really is. He's we're gonna get him on the news cast one of these days pretty soon. He's a really nice. cool. He's a content creator and he's a really good. Guy. Works for me. So he's, he's here. We're he's following really back. Great guy. Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Progress. Cool. Just now, I'm probably gonna wait a week and then unfollow you because I really just get it for the oh, follow. Stop. But it's good that we have. <laughs> <laughs> I get the, I get those all the time. Being a fairly new podcast, it's like oh cool oh okay bye. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I will well, go through mine from time to time. Like the bigger, the bigger creators that I know that I'm like have thousands mm -hmm. and thousands that followed me. I go back and look, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you you unfollowed me as soon as I followed you. So click, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. See yep. you later. Um. Well, you guys can hear everything for the food for thought cast in the outro stinger, but please let us know what you're cooking, what you're eating this week. If it was amazing, it was memorable. If you have any cooking questions, you can reach out to Chef Steve or you can reach out to myself, the Food for Thought Cast on Instagram and mm -hmm. Facebook. 
we have just recently something like tripled our YouTube subscribers, which has been incredible. So thanks to everybody nice. who watched something. I think that. the YouTube video that we have, uh, mm -hmm. the episode about last meals on death row is something like 300 <laughs> views and it's That's ridiculous. Awesome. So it's really crazy. There's and they're really, all by inmates at Attica. There's no <laughs> rhyme or reason, right? Attica. With new uh, there's, <laughs> There, there's there's no uh, rhyme or reason to it. I tried to promote a video the other day about our President's Day episode and uh, the president's favorite food through the years, all the way through the present. And YouTube was like, nope, you can't do this ad. It's inappropriate. And I went to go appeal it. And they were like, it's political. And I was like, you guys, it's not. <laughs> 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 and it, we had an episode uh Jacob Roth came on from the Good Day for Movie podcast, and we had this bracket episode where we pitted, you know, fast food chains against one another, mm -hmm. kind of like wow. sports teams. Um, Google Ads apparently found something offensive in there. I cannot figure out what it is, but we can't promote <laughs> oh. that one either. So listen, yeah, be, a, be a rebel and go find right hell to the Chiefs and go find the Fast and the Curious and listen to it <laughs> or watch it on YouTube and subscribe as a, a middle finger to the man. Okay. Go, go right. do that. Um, right. So the anyhow, man. Hey, thanks guys for coming on. Thank you so much. Um, it was awesome. This well, was fun. Was a lot of fun. Yeah, we that really enjoyed fun. it. This was amazing. It's a podcast. I, like I don't have to edit. I'm excited. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Guess what? I'm not going to edit it either. It's going there up as is. One but take. I'm just saying the first take is the only take. Um, so <laughs> anyhow, um, Steve, we got to go. Say bye. 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 That's a wrap for today. Until the next episode of the Food for Thought cast, make good food, eat good food, share it, and be kind to one another. Thanks so much for listening today. You are part of what makes us special, and we are so glad you joined us. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and leave a review. Just like food, delicious podcasts are better when you share them with others. Come back for seconds wherever podcasts are served, and we'll catch you in the next episode of the Food for Thought cast. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at the Food for Thoughtcast or at www.foodforthoughtcast.com where you can link to all podcast players or you can send us an email at foodforthoughtcmc at gmail.com.